you have all very graciously agreed to be part of a reading of fan fiction that I have written based on Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, here on this May the 4th, 2020. Sir, my dog. Um, yes, so we have lots of the roles cast, thanks to all of you, and there will be lots that we are just calling audibles for as the script goes on. Um, by way of preface, for those of you that may not be familiar with it, I'm not going to get into like rankings of the Star Wars films or anything, but... This was a case of, I saw the movie, I said, I want to write something different. And then that's what happened. This is not a, a whole cloth, what my episode nine would be, but taking all the elements of J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio's story. So it's most of the same characters, plot points, et cetera, et cetera, but recontextualized in a different way. So the ending is different and a lot of the beats are different, yada, yada, yada. So, does anybody have any queries before we begin with this nonsense? No. Okay. All right. Does everybody have a copy of the script? Let me make sure I've sent it to everybody before I start reading, either digitally or physical. Yes. And I, I think you should run down the cast list before we start as well. Okay. Let me see. Um, and you know, it's up to you, Jake, but I, I was thinking if we could have, have everybody do a quick five second introduction, that would oh, be nice. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, let me, yeah. I guess everybody do that while I'm pulling up the cast list. Somebody start. Why don't uh, you, you, okay. Oh, okay. I'll, I guess yeah. I'll go first. Hi, my name's Will. Uh, I'm a musician. My SoundCloud is Will the Otaku. Please check it out. Go on to the next person. Awesome. Uh, Kyle, you want to run it? Sure. Uh, Ian, you can actually go next. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Ian Gibson. Um, my day job is not important. My nighttime job is being part of Subpixel. Haley, you're up. Hey, I'm Haley. Um, I'll be reading for Ray tonight, and um, I work for a textbook publisher. It's very exciting. Awesome. Wilbo? Uh, hi, I'm Will. Uh, I'm also from Subpixel, and I like video games. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Bryce, go for it. Hey, I'm Bryce. Uh, I live in Louisville. I work for a business coaching company, and I'll be reading for General Hux, I think. Yes. Awesome. Jimmy, go for it. Hey, I'm Jimmy. I like Star Wars and video games. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Sam and Lauren. Um, hi, my name is Sam. Uh, I'm Jake's brother, as well as a, uh, a film score composer and retail store manager. I'm Lauren. I'm his wife, and I'm a graphic designer. Awesome, Fletch. I don't know how we up. got into what occupations we all are, but <laughs> it's the most important. Hey, thing we I'm have. I'm Fletch. I'm Kyler Rin slash Ben Solo for the night. Uh, I'm currently just got back into school, so I'm a film student again, and I like to party. Awesome, Lucy, you're up. I'm Lucy, and um, I work for a nonprofit, but I'm also an actor and singer, and I just really love Star Wars, so I'm happy to be here. Sweet. Hussman, your turn. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Yeah. Hi, my name is Andrew Hussman. Um, I'm a programmer who knows a lot of media stuff as well. Uh, I know many of the wonderful people in here because I went to school with them. Great. And I will be playing everybody's favorite walking carpet tonight, Chewbacca. You You've already got the, the filter on your microphone set perfectly, so... All right, Lando, your turn. Hi, I'm Lando. Uh, I am also a musician who also went back to school. Uh, and I know Jake uh, through Hazel, uh, his wife. And I am playing the part of Lando, fittingly. Great. Okay, and we have two fellow Jitsters. I still don't know your names, uh, but you can just go if I didn't. No, I don't know who's, who's I don't know lost who is who. here. Leticia's mic is not unmuting, apparently. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Leticia, if you figure that out, you can go. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Kyle. I'm one quarter of Subpixel, and I do video game documentaries, I guess. <laughs> and Jake, you have to go. Oh, yeah. I'm Jake Terrio, and I wrote this stupid thing, and I am also uh, a filmmaker by day and by night, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know who's still here. 
or who's not still here? I don't know. I don't know if you, uh, I came in a little late to the party. Um, oh, is that you, Taylor? Yeah, what's up? Uh, my not name is Taylor, lot. and I went, I lived on Third Nerd with a few of these guys back in college. I actually work in cybersecurity, but I just love Star Wars and I think this kind of thing is fun. So here I am. Awesome. Right. And I think Leticia, um, left but she's coming back how soon does rose show up in the, in there the, she I forget is where she's in my screenplay um, this is going to be super fun to edit together oh yeah this is going to be a mess all right okay, taylor now we can see you that's great uh, yeah i, I hit allow on both of them but apparently it didn't default to enabling them so just figure we're, it out we're working with what we can so uh <laughs> as long as it works right now hopefully it'll continue to do that but uh, aside from Leticia, who I think is, okay, now she's back. I can hear her. Leticia, can you talk and just introduce yourself real quick? Still cannot hear you. It says you're muted. Bum, is, that any, is that any better? If you hold the space bar, it can unmute. You were unmuted a second ago. There you go. Yeah, there you go. How many viewers are watching us figure out? Okay, sorry. Computer's <laughs> old, so it's being finicky. Oh, that's fine. We can hear you now, so just, just go ahead and give yourself. <laughs> I apologize for the technical difficulties. Oh, you're fine. Um, but yes, perfect. Just uh, give yourself quick a, intro. a yeah. quick little. Um, my name is Leticia Julian. I am an actor. Yes, currently living in um, Chicago. Um, with some, I also went to school with Jake and a lot of other people here. So awesome. excited to be a part of this. Well, Jake, I think that is everyone, or okay. at least everyone who who managed to get on here. So, uh, without any further ado, why don't you take it away? All right, I'm gonna read all the action description in a very stupid way, starting with the title page. So, the rise of Skywalker, an alternate version by Jake Terrio. Should Characters. we run down cast list? Oh, sorry, forgot to do that. Okay, so who we've got um, as far as spe spe specifically designated characters. Kylo Ren will be Jay Fletcher, uh, Zori Bliss, Lucy, if you are okay grabbing that along with some others. Uh, Lieutenant Connix, I think is how that's pronounced. Lauren, if you'll do that. Container Trooper 1, Will Crosby. Container Trooper 2, Ian Gibson. Uh, defected Trooper Kyle Bailey. These are in alphabetical order. Um, <laughs> detention Officer Ian Gibson. First Order Comms Technician will be Jimmy. First Order Data Technician Will Crosby. First Order Navigator Will Lockery. I love these sci fi movies. They're just all designated <laughs> occupations. Um, then there's a bunch of officers we'll call out when we get to them. First Order Shuttle Pilot also Will Lockery. Um, do any of you, uh, mans want to claim the ghost of Han Solo? I'll I can claim it if you hear there, no. if it doesn't conflict with the Poe stuff, but. It should not. That's the one I scene, there's so. one scene in this script that is verbatim as it was in the theatrical release of The Rise of Skywalker. And Basically it is the, the only good scene. Kylo and the ghost of Han Solo. Spoiler alert. If somehow you're watching this and have not seen The Rise of Skywalker. Um, okay, Hollow Reporter, which shows up, I think, at the very end, will be Kyle Bailey, because he is also playing Emperor Palpatine. Um, I am. Who is alive and I've got well, kind lighting of. effects, too. So um, General Hux, Bryce Shockley, Knight of Wren, which has a speaking role in this movie, is Ian Gibson. Uh, Lando Calrissian will be played by our very own Lando. <laughs> Loud Trooper will also be Kyle Bailey. I actually don't remember why I designated that character <laughs> that way, so I'm looking forward to finding out. Me too, because uh, I don't Lucy, remember reading him. If you want to be Maz Kanata. Uh, and then Palpatine is Kyle Bailey. Poe Dameron, Taylor. Uh, Enric Pride, Sam Terrio. Ray is Haley Hewlett. Rose is Leticia Julian. Secondary Knight of Wren, also important, Will Crosby. Uh, Specialist Trooper 1, Ian Gibson. Trooper Defector, Jimmy. Uh, Zay Versio. Lauren, if you want to take a role as a two character that I put into this script. Um, 
Andrew Hussman will be playing Chewbacca, and I will be narration and action description. There are so many other stormtroopers <laughs> listed here um, that we will figure out as we go along. All right. Yep. And just just a uh, quality assurance thing, or I guess house rules, mute yourself if you're not talking. Sure. Um, okay. For the most part, I will read all the action description, except if there's like big chunks of short dialogue that I maybe have something written. Just roll through the scene. We'll figure it out for the next hour and a half. Um, all right. Here we go. The Rise of Skywalker. An alternate version by Jake Terrio. Characters by George Lucas. Story by J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio and Derek Connolly and Colin Trevorrow. And then uh, my contact information, if for some reason viewers have gotten a hold of this. We open card a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Blast of John Williams music. Exterior, space, day, crawl, Star Wars, Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. The First Order is in chaos. With the death of Supreme Leader Snoke and the destruction of the fleet above Crate, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren has called a convention of all surviving First Order commanders. Anxious that news of their defeat on Crate will bolster sympathy for the Resistance, the new Supreme Leader dispatches the Knights of Ren to quell any uprisings of the subjugated systems. Meanwhile, the tattered remnants of the Resistance, under the leadership of General Leia Organa, search for refuge among the stars, hopeful that others in the galaxy will answer their call. She dispatches the new crew of the Millennium Falcon to Arcanus, where word has reached the resistance of an Imperial officer intending to defect. As the crawl fades into the stars, the camera tilts down to reveal Snoke's flagship, pursuing the Resistance fleet towards Crate. We hear the voice of Kylo Ren at first distance, then clearer as the camera quickly dollies towards Snoke's vessel. No, no. You're still holding... Cut to interior Snoke's throne room, continuous. Kylo and Rey stand equidistant from one another, split by the monolithic black throne of the Supreme Leader and surrounded by the bodies of slain Praetorian guards. Do you want to know the truth about your parents? Or have you always known? There is sorrow in Ray's eyes, in part for the memory of her parents, but also for the man standing in front of her. He begins to walk towards her. You've just hidden it away. You know the truth. Say it. He stands before her. She says nothing. Say it. They were nobody. They were filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. They're dead in a pauper's grave in the Jakku Desert. You have no place in this story. You come from nothing. You are nothing. He pauses. But not to me. He extends his hand to her. Join me, please. She reaches out her hand, but instead of placing it in his as anticipated, she reaches out for her lightsaber. As it flies through the air, he too reaches for it, locking it in the air between the two figures. As they both strain to pull the saber from one another, Kylo looks out to the stars beyond the throne room and sees a distant point of light briefly elongate and pierce through Snoke's ship. His vision is consumed in a flash of light. Cut to interior Kylo Chambers day. Kylo Ren violently awakens, unceremoniously pulled from his dream by something else tugging at the edges of his mind. He gasps for air. Sweat beads down his face. He takes a few moments to gather his thoughts before rising from his bed and donning his First Order regalia. He exits his chambers into the Hall of the Steadfast Continuous. Ren walks down the Hall of the Star Destroyer Steadfast, his personal flagship since the destruction of Snoke's supremacy. Interior, Steadfast Conference Room, moments later. The doors to the conference room hiss open and Ren is greeted by several First Order officers, including General Hux. Hux steps forward as Ren enters. Supreme Leader, it is my great honor to introduce you to... Kylo dismisses him with a wave of his hand and walks to the head of the conference table. The other officers awkwardly sit, all but Hux and one other. What are the local uprisings? We have updates from the field, but I think General Pride would be more suited to present the details. Hux sits. The other officer, General Enric Pride, steps forward. His head bows ever so slightly as he addresses Kylo Ren. Enric Pride, Your Excellency, I served at the pleasure of the Emperor, and I serve at the pleasure of the Supreme Leader. 
Long may he live. You have news? Yes. Your knights have reported that several local systems, as word spread of our tenuous victory on Crate, have decided to close their ports to all ships bearing First Order insignia. They believe if enough of them withheld their resources, we may allow them greater autonomy. What systems? Pride looks to a First Order officer seated further down the table. The officer reads off a tablet. Ian, you want to read that? Yeah, I can read that. Malastare, Arcanus, a handful of other midrim planets, Hederal Prime, Force of God, Naboo. Ren considers this. Send contingents of ambassadors to each system. Convince them that standing against the First Order is a fool's errand. Make them feel like they have a choice in the matter. And we're, the, and we're the best one. Yes, Supreme Leader. And if they don't comply? They will. Kylo Ren turns to look at Hux. General Hux, if my memory is correct, you were born on Arcanus, were you not? Yes, Supreme Leader. Why don't you lead the contingent to that system? They're your people. Perhaps you can persuade them. Yes, my lord. It would be an honor. Good. You're all dismissed. The officers leave the chamber. Kylo turns to look out at the stars. General Pride lingers a moment longer to observe Ren, but eventually he departs too. Interior, the Millennium Falcon, same time. The interior of the Millennium Falcon is bustling with life. The camera tracks around the ship in a continuous shot, observing daily life on the Falcon. Chewbacca and Finn are playing Dejarek on the Falcon's hollow chess table. Rey is reading one of the Jedi texts from Octo. Rose is fiddling around beneath one of BB-8's exterior panels, fixing something. BB is happy. Poe emerges from elsewhere in the ship. Uh, do we... Ooh, we don't have a Finn. Who wants to read for Finn? I can take that if no one else wants it. You, Finn, and Pride have scenes together. It needs to be someone uh, else. I can grab it. That's okay, fine. do it. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll be dropping out of hyperspace in a few minutes, so make sure your affairs are in order. Okay, how difficult can this whole flying thing be if you're here, oh, but the ship isn't crashing? No more difficult than it would be to wipe that smug grin off your face. Rose closes up BB's panel and sets him on the floor. He zooms over to Poe, who gives him a little scratch under the chin. Rose. Did we lose Rose? Who is Rose? Oh, I think she's talking. I think her mic might be down again. Oh, no. Our first of what will likely be many glitches. Leticia, we cannot hear you. BB Scomplink is working, but your microphone's not. <laughs> Do you have an alternate form of audio? That's weird. It was working earlier. Uh oh. All right, Ian. What's our what's our call here, Tech Master? Um, I, I I think she keeps trying to figure it out, but we we keep going. All right, Leticia, if you want to troubleshoot that for a second, and we will have uh, somebody else read for Rose for the for the interim. Um, all right, Lauren, you want to grab right, that? Good. Oh wait, did we just hear you? Yeah. I don't know. Did you hear me? Yes. Yay. Okay. 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 Sorry. I don't know what's happening. All right. Go for it. Um, I think I got bb 8s Scomp Link working. Comp Link. I'm sorry. Scomp Link working. So we shouldn't have any trouble getting into first order stockades anymore. Poe squats down to address BB directly. Oh, yeah? You're a little hacker now, buddy? BB trills a response. Chewie grunts an exclamation. <laughs> Easy for you to say. You could just break the door down anyway. The camera pans over and pushes in on Ray, who has looked up from her book to watch the other occupants of the Falcon. She smiles, enjoying the camaraderie. The conversations continue, but fade as music swells. 
Bells. The swell is cut off, interrupted by Ray. Yes? He approaches her, and as Poe and Chewie retreat to the bridge, BB follows Rose to another part of the ship. You spaced out there for a bit. What are you reading? She closes the book to glance at the cover. Oh, one of the books from the Jedi Temple. Anything interesting? So far, just a lot of bibliographies and obtuse philosophical ramblings. I can see why Luke left these on the shelf. So what did he teach you? She ponders this. Oh, well, it was all more practical than this. Exercises. It was only a few days. Could you teach me something? Ray is caught off guard by the request. What? One of the exercises. You know, just for fun. She thinks for a moment and is willing to humor him. Okay. She gestures. Sit here. Finn sits and crosses his legs. Close your eyes. He does. The Force is not a power that the Jedi have. The force is just that, a force. Luke called it a tension, binding the whole universe together. Sounds like philosophical rambling. Focus. Finn shifts a little in his seat, trying to get more comfortable. Now reach out with your feelings. What? Shh, focus. Breathe. Finn settles. What do you see? Finn's face contorts slightly as he tries to follow Ray's instructions. Hux? What? Hux. I see General Hux. He opens his eyes and uncrosses his legs. If this is what the Force is like, I don't... At the same time. Dropping out of hyperspace. Poe pulls back on a lever and the swirling blue tunnel surrounding the Falcon transitions into elongated streams of light and eventually distinct stars. A forested planet looms below them. Exterior, Arcanus orbit, continuous. The Falcon dives into Arcanus' atmosphere. Star destroyers can be seen peeking around the far side of the planet. Exterior, Arcanus' surface, night, continuous. The Falcon descends through thick clouds. Rain pelts the hull as the ship swings low over the forest. The Falcon comes to rest in a clearing in the woods. Lights from a sizable city can be seen in the distance. Interior, Millennium Falcon, Ray's chambers, continuous. Ray enters and begins to collect her things, bag, staff, etc., she turns to leave, but senses a change in the air. When she turns back around, she discovers Kylo Ren sitting in her room. What do you want? How is she? What? Leia. How is she? Ray is surprised by the question. She isn't sure how to answer. She begins to speak, but can't quite muster the right words. Kylo finally looks up at her. They lock eyes for the briefest of moments before Poe walks in the door. About to head out. You ready? Kylo has disappeared. Poe notices Ray seems distracted. She is still looking at the place where Kylo sat. He leans into the room and looks around. What are you looking at? Ray composes herself and turns to him. Nothing. Just making sure I had everything. They depart together. Was it a porg? Look, I thought we got them all, but if they're still sneaking around in here, you've got to tell me. Interior. Kylo's chambers. Same time. Kylo sits, head in his hands. He sits in silence for several beats before a hologram pops up on a nearby console. Supreme Leader, General Pride requests your presence in his command deck. He has news. The hologram fades. Kylo lifts his head. Exterior, Arcanus City, night, sometime later. Finn, Poe, Rose, Chewbacca, Ray, and BB-8 head into the city, each in some kind of basic disguise. Ponchos, hoods, the usual. All right, folks, just that casual. Lay said the contact room meeting will be in this canteen up ahead. Chewbacca mm. slouches slightly in a vain attempt to obscure himself. The crew enters the Arcanus Cantina. Interior, Arcanus Cantina, continuous. The cantina is full of the kind of fantastical folks and creatures Star Wars is known for. Poe heads to the bar while everyone else lingers by the door. Poe speaks to the bartender, but the dialogue is drowned out by the ambient noise. The bartender points to a booth. Poe gestures to the rest of the group. They approach a booth occupied by Zori Bliss. Poe sits, having somewhat claimed the role of the de facto leader of the expedition. You're Zori Bliss? Who's asking? Poe shows her a resistance ring, like Rose showed to the broom boy on Cantonica. A mutual friend of ours says introductions are in order. Bliss looks at the ragtag group of heroes, eyes lingering for a moment on each. There's more of you than I was expecting. Is that a problem? Not yet. She stands. 
Follow me. Exterior, Arcana City Night. Bliss leads the group through the city. Finn, Poe, and Ray form a small clump some ways behind her. Rose, Chewie, and BB-8 form another group further back. Unmute yourself, Will. That's such a good line read, too. This is one of Leia's friends? If Leia says we can trust her, then we can trust her. Some TIE fighters scream overhead. Let's just get to the contact and get out of here. We'll have plenty of time to argue about the general choice of allies back on the Falcon. Interior, wealthy Arcanus home, night. The crew of the Falcon congregates in a dining area. Finn admires some of the art hanging on the walls. Chewie stands by the door. Poe, Ray, and Rose are seated. BB rolls around contentedly. Zori Bliss sits at the opposite end of the table, dutifully monitoring a tablet on the table before her. Something pings on the screen. He's here. Bliss stays seated, but Poe, Ray, and Rose stand. To everyone's surprise, Armitage Hux enters the room. Sorry for the delay. I had to find a creative way to extricate myself from security detail. Everyone but Ray and Bliss draw weapons. Hux, the man Finn had seen in a vision just hours earlier. She looks to Finn. Was this coincidence or his prediction? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the defector? Bliss nods. Surprise. How did we lose Leticia's mic again? <laughs> Do whatever you did last time. It wasn't time. a very significant line emotionally, so we can just skip it. Use the force. <laughs> Do you try holding down the space bar again, Leticia? He did something to her sister. It's the first remember. order. All right, Lauren, you want to hop in just for that line for a sec? Sure. You killed my sister. And nearly executed us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Sorry. you said it, Chewie. Look, we can go round and round all day long about who is responsible for what tragedy or another. But I have information that is of incredible value to your little reactionary movement. So let's make a deal. Everyone tentatively lowers their weapons. Ray speaks up. Why are you doing this? Why help us? This has nothing to do with you or your resistance. The First Order is fading. For as pitiful as your fleet has become, the results of your efforts are undeniable. Ren is unstable, a powder keg ready to explode. And when it does, he will take the whole First Order with him. I want a seat at the table of whatever comes next. And your General Organa is my best path to that future. Now, I am willing to supply your leadership with First Order troop movements, encryption codes, tactical readouts, and all I want in return is governorship of this planet once the First Order falls. This is met with silence from the crew. A beat passes before Ray replies. We're not in a position to agree to any of that. A deal of this magnitude will have to come from Leia herself. Wonderful. I suggest we leave as soon as possible. The death troopers that brought me here have certainly noticed I've gone. Poe draws the crew in for a huddle, or as much of a huddle as he can manage under the circumstances. Ray, you're not suggesting we bring this guy onto the Falcon. I don't see what choice we have. We could just ignore him, leave him here. You heard him. We've been hitting the First Order harder than we thought. We don't need his help. Oh, I don't know what's up with your mic, Leticia. I'm so sorry. Lauren, you want to pick that up? No, as much as I hate to say it, Ray is right. You've seen the state of the fleet. Can we at least knock him out then? Chewie hit him on the head. Chewie grunts in affirmation. <laughs> I will gladly wear some sort of mask or blindfold if it would make you more comfortable. Poe looks to Ray. He takes a moment. Okay. But I swear if you try anything on our ship, anything, I will shoot you out the airlock without a second thought. How charming. It's a wonder this kind of charisma hasn't drawn more star systems to your cause. Don't push it. Chewie slips a hood over Hux's head. Exterior, wealthy Arcanus home. Night, moments later. Shrouded in 
shadow as the falcon depart with General Hux. The figure speaks into a comm link. The language is alien, but the intent is clear. Interior, steadfast command deck sometime later. Kylo Ren boldly strides onto the command deck of the Star Destroyer Steadfast. The comms technician who hollowed him is speaking to General Pride. The technician turns to face Kylo as he approaches. Pride turns too, but more slowly, deliberately so. Supreme Leader, I was just informed General Pride, just informing General Pride, our scouts in the Kadamimum sector have reported a potential resistance base on the Jaren Moon, Ajin Kloss. Kylo recognizes the name from his brief education in Alderanian history. That stretch of the Salonan Spur was originally charted by Alderanian explorers. I'm sure General Organa couldn't pass up an opportunity to honor her planet's pathetic legacy. He pauses. General Pride, con contact Hux and have a rendezvous with us at Ajara. Then we will descend on this proxy Alderaan and end the resistance once and for all. With pleasure, Supreme Leader. Kylo Ren departs from the command deck. The comms technician turns to Pride. General, would you like me to patch you through to General Hux? Uh, no, I'll contact him from my quarters. Thank you. General Pride exits the command deck and crosses the hall to a turbo lift. The turbo lift descends several floors, and Pride departs for the officer's quarters. Interior Pride's quarters moments later. Pride enters his quarters and lets the door hiss shut behind him. For a moment, he finds himself surrounded in darkness until several of the chamber's recessed lights begin to illuminate the space. A scarlet Imperial messenger droid sits in the corner of the room. Pride approaches the droid, and it sits up a little straighter as he draws near. A face appears on the holographic monitor built into the droid's head. Captain Pride, the future of the Empire depends on you. Exterior, the Millennium Falcon, day, sometime later. Poe spools up a bundle of cable at the base of the Falcon's entry ramp. He watches in the distance as General Hux is led into a meeting room with General Leia. Some groups of resistance folk dart around the base. The ground is wet and dotted with, puzzle with puddles from a recent rainstorm. Finn emerges from the Falcon, carrying a box of mechanical equipment. How do we know he's not going to immediately run back to Kylo Ren and tell him where we are? Are you sure you're not just jealous you're not the most important First Order defector anymore? Then sets the box on the ground. You didn't have this guy order your execution. He did shoot us out of the sky the first day we met. Does that count? Rose emerges from the crowd. So Leticia Beck, I can't see on the stream. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. What page are you on? Uh, 16. Bottom of 16. Thank you. Sorry. You're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like some of the scanners are down because of the storm. Do we have any capacitors I could use to patch one of the relays? I think so. Let me check with Chewie. Finn reboards the Falcon. The base is blind right now? Temporarily. We should have it fixed soon. Ray and BB-8 disembark. Hux is in with Leia? Yeah, he's her problem now. Finn and Chewbacca reemerge from the Falcon. More boxes of things in the end. Will these do? Rose yes, these are, these are perfect. She takes the box of capacitors from Finn. Come on, Chewie. Let's show this space what real engineers look like. Chewie growls enthusiastically. <laughs> he and Rose depart to another part of the base. Poe sets his cable bundle aside, now fully spooled. I'm going to find Commander Daisy for debrief. You two good watching the ship? It'll be tough, but I think we can manage. Poe chuckles and vanishes into the throng. Finn watches him go. He takes a moment before returning to Ray. I want to try again. Sorry? The Force. I want to try again. Ray is surprised, but pleased. Oh, sure. She looks around at the incredibly loud and busy base. Follow me. Exterior, training ground, day, minutes later. Ray and Finn emerge into a clearing. She gestures to a stump. And sit there. Do Jedi spend their whole lives sitting? Sit. Finn sits and closes his eyes, unprompted. Let's try reaching out again. Finn breathes and lets it and wait finn i wrote this wrong sorry typo finn breathes in and lets out a long exhalation what do you see woods trees could be just the smell of the trees though good reach further i see something 
there's something just beyond the edge, but what? Uh, it's just back to trees now. He opens his eyes and looks at her. That's good. You did good. We can try again later. It'll feel more natural the more you practice. When do I get to lift up things with my brain? He gestures with his hand and waggles his fingers a bit, as though hoping to trigger some sort of force on setting. Focus comes first. Let me try again then. I can get it. He sits up a little straighter and closes his eyes. Ray smiles. Interior steadfast command deck, same time. The steadfast is in hyperspace, roaring towards Asian Kloss. Kylo stands at the windows, observing the swirling blue around the ship. General Pride stands a ways behind him. Ten minutes until arrival. Assemble a landing team. Do you not think it would be more efficient to attack the base from orbit? Kylo turns. That won't be necessary. I will be the landing party and oversee the destruction of their base myself. Pride begins to walk towards him. Supreme Leader, the present moment finds the First Order fragile, delicately holding itself together after our incursion on Crate. Why risk the lives of our soldiers on a ground attack when we could just launch an orbital bombardment just as easily? Kylo steps to meet him. General Pride, are you the Supreme Leader? No, my lord, I, I only meant... Th then the fleet will do as I command. He turns to an officer standing in a recessed module on the command deck. Assemble a limb team. I'd ready my ship. Somebody, uh, First Order officer, somebody pick that up. Yes, Supreme Leader. He turns back to Pride. And you, General Pride, will not show that kind of insubordination. Is that clear? Absolutely, my lord. Kylo departs the command deck in a flurry of robes and rage. Pride flashes a sinister grin. Exterior, a jar in orbit, day. The steadfast booms out of hyperspace. Several First Order ships emerge from the underbelly of the Star Destroyer, led by Kylo Ren in his Thai silencer. Interior, steadfast command deck, same time. General Pride watches the ships swing around a jaran and head for the Resistance base. Exterior, Resistance base, minutes later. Rose and Chewie are working together to patch a blown relay. Spanner. Chewie bellows and hands her a tool from his kit. Hmm. She takes it and tightens a bolt. I am being gentle. Let's see your big hands do this. The Wookiee grunts. Hmm. She places a panel back on the relay, covering up their handiwork. There. He looks over to a resistance technician at a nearby console. Fire it up. The technician turns some knobs and flips some levers. Sounds of machinery springing to life can be heard across the base. But the whirs and pings of the newly powered machines are soon replaced by warning klaxons. Will Locker, you want to be resistance technician? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, all right. Proximity alert. First order ships in orbit around Adjuron. Adger, yeah. Exterior training ground, same time. Finn and Ray hear the klaxons in the distance. Is that the base? They hear an explosion in the distance. They look to each other before running off into the woods towards the base. Exterior, resistance base, same time. Laser fire breaks out across the base. First order stormtroopers emerge from the woods. Rose and Chewie run to the Falcon. Get her started, Chewie! He yelps ah. a rookie response. They run onto the ship. Across the camp in an outdoor command center, Command Alarm Adesi and Poe crouch behind a console. Laser fire flies overhead, piercing through screens and antennae. Daisy looks to the executive tent. Lauren, you want to grab Daisy? I can't see or hear you. Poe goes first. Yeah, Poe go first. Sorry, I was on the, the PDF and now it's scrolled a jillion pages. No, you're, we are on uh, 22. Middle of 22. Catch it back. Sorry about that. Where did these guys come from? They must have arrived in orbit while the scanners were down. Get to the general. Oop. Now mine flew across the page. Okay. Uh, Poe is readying to make a desperate sprint across the camp, but then he hears the familiar ignition and crackle of Kylo Ren's saber. The Supreme Leader's voice carries over the din. Where is the spy? Across the way, Hux and Leia emerge from the executive tent. They are rushed to a nearby CR-90 class ship by a group of resistance fighters. Hux and Ren Hux sees Ren in the distance and is visibly unsettled. Kylo begins a steady march towards the ship. 
Uh, Poe watches as Kylo moves away from the command center towards the CR-90. He looks to Daisy and Lieutenant Cox, who, along with a number of other Resistance fighters, are hunkered down in the command center and periodically exchanging blaster fire with the oncoming stormtroopers. I'll cover you. Start getting people to the ships. Daisy nods and begins barking orders to the other soldiers. All right, everybody. To your fighters. And if you have them, or transports if you can, we'll regroup on Lamu. The soldiers provide cover fire to one another as everybody be as everyone begins slowly working their way to the hangars. Poe looks up to see the steadfast moving into orbit overhead. A trooper captain observes Leia and Hux heading to the CR-90. He raises a comm link to his mask. Kyle, you want to be the captain? You are muted. Unmute yourself. We have eyes on General Hux. General Pride is looking down on... A Did it happen to everyone? Yeah, I think so. It says we're still going, though. It says still counting at the top. Um, okay. Did everyone die or did we get one too? We've got 15. Hello. I think we're still going. Hi, I'm back. Okay. I'm alive. Oh, Can you hear me? Yes. yes. This is going exactly Hello. as well as I expected it would. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> okay. Is everybody back? I believe so. Okay. Let's just make sure that we're still streaming. I The stream is still live. Yeah, yeah stream, stream is good. I see the okay. stream. Oh, so it wasn't just me. Whoever's running the stream, uh, the Chrome little widget thing is up. Got it. Thanks. All right. Where were we? All right, hold up. Everybody good? Just go to the interior steadfast command deck, same In time. Interior steadfast command deck, same time. General Pride is looking down on Asian Claus, listening to the incoming communication. Boarding a CR-90 class vessel with General Organa. Pride turns to an officer. Deploy TIE fighters. We can't let that Corvette breach the atmosphere. Exterior resistance base, same time. Finn and Ray emerge from the woods. They see Kylo advancing on the CR-90. Finn sees troopers descending on the command center. Poe pops up from behind a console, but takes a blaster bolt to the shoulder. Poe! He runs toward the command center, unleashing blaster bolts on the unsuspecting troopers. Ray watches him go, but turns to see Leia and Hux board the CR-90. Kylo Ren in deliberate pursuit. She ignites her saber and hurls it toward Ren. Kylo senses the oncoming attack and turns to deflect the incoming saber. It glances off his and spirals off, spirals off in a chaotic arc. Ray runs towards him and reaches out for the lost saber. It flies to her hand just in time to clash with Kylo's. They push off from one another, sabers whirring and crackling as they separate. Finn reaches Poe and helps him off the ground. Resistance pilots reach, begin to reach their fighters and transports, and the sounds of engines heating up begin to join the sounds and shouts of laser fire. Finn and Poe begin to work their way back toward the Falcon. BB! BB-8 emerges from a stack of crates and zooms off towards the Falcon. Rose emerges on the ramp just in time to see BB zoom past her. She sees Finn and Poe approaching and fires at a handful of troopers pursuing them, giving her friends some cover as they hobble to the old freighter. Back between the Falcon and the CR-90, Ray and Kylo exchange blows, but it is obvious they're both pulling their punches. The CR-90's engines roar to life, and the ship begins to lift off from the ground. Other resistance ships begin to lift off and dart for the atmosphere. Finn and Poe arrive at the ramp to the Falcon. Rose helps Poe up the ramp and into the vessel. Finn looks out across the base and sees Ray fighting Kylo. Rose stops halfway up the ramp, noticing Finn has not followed her and Poe. Finn, we have to go! Not yet! Ray and Kylo lock sabers, jockeying for dominance as each push further into the other. Sabers crackle, crackle, eyes lock. The distant scream of twin ion engines interrupt the moment. Kylo looks up. No. He force pushes Ray away and watches in horror as a pair of TIE bombers roar overhead and launch torpedoes into the ascending CR-90. 
the ship just meters off the ground, explodes in a furious eruption of reactors and fuel cells. The shockwave knocks the nearby Ray and Ren to the ground. Ray is stunned, dipping in and out of consciousness. She feels hands lifting her from the ground. The voices of her rescuers seem distant in her ringing ears. Ray! Can you walk? Ray nods absentmindedly, still not taking everything in. She gazes to the burning wreckage of the CR-90. Leia. Her ears stop ringing. Finn steadies her. Ray, we have to go. An unconscious Kylo begins to stir. Ray looks on him with sorrow, but follows Finn and Rose to the Falcon. They board. Kylo lifts himself off the ground to see the Falcon soar away from the base. He turns to the fire of the CR-90 wreckage and kneels down in the mud, crushed. But morning turns to fury as he looks skyward toward the steadfast. Interior, the Millennium Falcon, moments later. In hyperspace, the atmosphere on the Falcon is one of deep sorrow. Leia, their leader, their beacon of hope, a face of resistance in the face of unyielding opposition and tyranny, is gone. These realities are reflected on everyone's faces, but Chewbacca most of all. His furry head rests in his hands. Deep, wookie sobs reverberate out from behind trembling fingers. Rose sits beside him, a hand on his back. Finn sits at the Falcon's Dejaric table along with a bandaged Poe and a battle-weary Ray, her mind light years away. How did they find us? They must have tracked Hux somehow. I knew we shouldn't have trusted him. He may not have even known they were following him. He had no choice. He was the mission. But what are we going to do now? No one answered Leia's call on Crate. Do you think they'll answer ours now that she's gone? The men's voices grow distant as Ray is consumed by her thoughts. She stands. Ray? She looks down at him. I need some time. She departs for her quarters. Interior, Millennium Falcon, Ray's chambers, moments later. The door to her room hisses shut. Ray sits down at the edge of her bunk. Interior, Kylo's chambers, same time. Kylo Ren, the supreme leader of the First Order, weeps. From the relative security and familiarity of his bed aboard the Steadfast, he mourns, alone. Interior Millennium Falcon, raised chambers, continuous. Ray places her head in her hands and cries softly. Something in the air changes. She lifts her head and turns slightly. Kylo Ren is in her bunk. He is on his side, facing away from her. She is surprised to hear him crying. Interior Kylo's chambers, continuous. Kylo does not notice the visitor bridged to him by the force until she places a hand on his shoulder. His breathing steadies. He does not move to look at her, but knows whose hand it is. Several moments of silence pass before Ray whispers. Do you remember what you said to me that night after I fell into the cave? He does, but he remains silent, unmoving. It isn't too late. He reaches up to place his hand on hers, but finds only his own shoulder. He sits up and turns. There is no one else in the room. Interior, steadfast hall, moments later. Kylo Ren attempts to compose himself as he storms down the halls of the steadfast. A group of stormtroopers see him coming and turn aside. Interior, steadfast command deck, moments later. Kylo Ren bursts into the command deck. General Pride slowly turns from the windows. Ren, with righteous fury in his eyes, approaches the general. Who ordered the TIE Fighters? I did, my lord. Was I or was I not clear when I said that this assault would be a ground assault? Supreme Leader, I thought it to be in the best interest of the First Order to not let the traitor Hux escape. And as reconnaissance on the ground would indicate, the Corvette also carried the Resistance General Leia Organa. With the Corvette's destruction, we have effectively destroyed their chain of command. It was not your order to give. I am the Supreme Leader, and you will do as I say. I serve at the pleasure of the Emperor. The Emperor is dead. Pride grins. Interior, steadfast conference room, some time later. Kylo Ren sits and observes the scarlet messenger droid ominously looming by the window. The wear on the droid's joints betrays its age, but it is obviously impeccably crafted. Kylo had heard rumors of these droids before, but had never seen one until now. Play recording. Kylo watches as the blank face of the droid sizzles into a holographic projection of Emperor Palpatine. Captain Pride, the future of the Empire depends on you. 
Inside this droid, you will find a vial of my own blood, and with it, a means to preserve our claim on this universe. Your task will not be easy. You must make your way to the cloning factories on Kamino. Before the Clone Wars, I requisitioned a special site for an occasion such as this. Take my blood to Kamino. Restore me. The image flickers. I look forward to experiencing the fruits of your labor. The image fades back to the blank slate of the droid's head. Why are you showing me this? What's to stop me from taking the fleet to Kamino and destroying the clone factories? Pride stands and walks around the table to Ren. Does the name Plagueis mean anything to you? The ancient Sith? The Emperor once told me a story about him, that he had learned how to manipulate the fabric of the universe to create life, and to perhaps even cheat death. And what are these stories? Service to the Emperor comes with many benefits, many rewards. I would imagine that fealty from someone of your stature would earn something special indeed. A means to bring back a loved one, perhaps? A yearning flashes across Kylo's face. It lasts no more than a moment, but Pride sees it. I'm not interested in necromancy, General Pride. Oh, please. This isn't some peasant ritual on Dathomir. We're talking about the kind of power that can bring down starships. The kind of power that can raise the heavens. He pauses. The power to bring her back. Kylo looks up at Pride. Exterior, Lamu orbit, day. The Falcon drops out of hyperspace over the rings of Lamu and dives down to the surface. Exterior, Lamu surface, continuous. Several ships have already landed near an overhang in the Lemurian mountainside. Survivors of the Asian Claws attack are beginning to congregate under the overhang and assemble their equipment. The Falcon lands and made a group of X-Wings and Y-Wings. Some shuttles of various sizes have already landed in a nearby field, and more periodically descend from the sky. Exterior, Lemu surface, dusk. A vigil is held for Leia. Familiar faces are scattered around the crowd. Ray, Finn, Poe, Rose, Chewie, Daisy, Connix, Maz Kanata, and a handful of other officers and pilots who survived the attack. Maz steps forward. Leia Organa was special to all of us. It's difficult to find the right words to summarize a life so truly lived, but I know she'd be happy each of you were here. Maz pauses. Politics was always Leia's second family, and she always made sure those of us around her felt like we were a part of it. I've been a part of many social hierarchies in my lifetime, and I've never seen someone with such camaraderie with... Looks to Connix. Officers... Connick smiles. Maz looks to Rose. And engineers. Rose smiles too. But if Leia's life taught me one thing, it's that anyone in this universe can make a difference, and no one dictator or army can change that. You may think that because she was a princess that her efforts in this life meant something more than yours, but that was not a reality she would have accepted. And I imagine that is how she would want us to honor her legacy. Maz looks to Ray. It matters not where each of us come from, only what we do with our time among these stars. So let us bear this torch with honor, the light of our bright morning star. She looks down at the memorial. Princess, General, Leia Organa. Interior, Lamu Base, Night. The key players for what remains of the Resistance gather around a table. Daisy leads the briefing. The attack on Asian class was profoundly devastating. But in the chaos of the battle, Leia's R2 unit never made it to the CR-90. So we have a complete recording of her conversation with General Hux. I wanted to share with all of you a passage I found particularly interesting. R2-D2 begins playing back a hollow recording of the meeting. We see a small version of Hux appear on the table. I've heard whispers of vast swaths of First Order resources being requisitioned to Kamino all under the leadership of General Anmerk Pride. He's a holdover from the Imperial days and acts like it. I don't know what business the First Order has at the end of the Outer Rim, but if Pride is involved, it's certainly something I'd want to know more about. The image crackles and fades. Camino, our records are spotty in regards to the planet's precise coordinates in space, 
but we do have verified information that Camino was the source of the Republic's clone army. What? So the First Order is trying to make a new clone army? Well, why not? As long as people like Finn and Hux are defecting, the First Order's numbers are going to keep dwindling until they have nothing left. I don't appreciate getting lumped in with Hux, but I get the point. How do we know he's he wasn't lying to throw us off whatever I'm the sorry, First Lord, Order we... is really planning? He wasn't. How do you know? A feeling. Ray looks to him. I felt it too. Of all the information we collected from General Hux, this was the piece we thought bore the greatest import. If the First Order is building another clone <sighs> army, it could be more devastating than any superweapon. And if this General Pride is involved, they may have been amassing, amassing this army since the fall of the Empire. Who knows how many troops they've created? Even if the information is false, I don't think we have any choice but to pursue it. Everyone is still for a moment. So, what do we do? Uh, direct attack is out of the question. We don't have the ships. We don't have the numbers. We could infiltrate the factories like Finn and I did on the Supremacy. You do remember we got double-crossed and almost killed, right? So, say we do find a way to infiltrate these factories. We are launching a covert operation on Intel. I'd be embarrassed to even call Limited. We're basically launching a covert op on nothing at all. For the Death Star and Starkiller base, we at least had schematics. We've, we've got nothing here. You said we don't even have the location of the planet? I can handle that. A contact of mine from my smuggling days has been there, back before the First Order started blocking off the Star Lanes. He can get us there. Another moment passes. In Leia's absence, I wanted to bring this to each of you. In part to make certain this plan of action was one we wish to pursue, but also to nominate a new leader for the Resistance. Everyone pauses for a moment. Heads turn, eyes lock. Ray. Heads turn to Ray. It should be Ray. Ray looks around at the assembled group. Looks of approval pass among them. Maz places a hand on hers. Ray looks down to the diminutive alien. Maz smiles. Ray? Ray looks up. Yes. Interior. Kylo's tie silencer. Sometime later. Ren Pai's ties the silencer through hyperspace, pulls back on the throttle, and watches the tunnel collapse and coalesce into distinct stars. He dives to the planet below. Exterior, caretaker village, Octo day, moments later. The tie silencer lands near the caretaker's village. Ren emerges from the craft and descends on to, into the collection of huts. He surveys one damaged building, one where Ray sat when they touched hands. Interior, the mirror cave, day, moments later. Kylo Ren jumps into the watery foyer of the mirror cave and swims to the subterranean shore. He climbs up onto the rocky slab and approaches the enigmatic wall. He steps up to the shimmering surface, removes a glove, and gently touches the mirror. He suddenly finds himself on interior bridge beneath Starkiller Base continuous. A bridge beneath Starkiller Base, the bridge upon which his father died. He hears movement behind him. Who was Ben? The... Yes. He turns to look to his father, but finds himself in Snoke's throne room, decimated. The throne room is burning. Praetorian guards litter the ground. Ray stands some distance away. He extends his hand to her. She takes it. He turns to leave, but is transported to Vader's castle on Mustafar. Kylo Ren sits atop a black throne. Before him stands Ray, clad in black robes, and before her kneels his mother, Leia Organa. Ray ignites a red double-bladed lightsaber and, looking him dead in the eye, strikes it into Leia's heart. Exterior, Octo, later. Kylo snaps back to reality. He is la laying in the grass on a hillside overlooking the sea. A porg nibbles at his shoe. He shoes it away. He looks out at the ocean. Interior, Lamu base, night. Daisy stands amidst a collection of crates. Chewbacca, Rose, and Ray stand at the periphery of the collection. Uh, these are all of General Organa's personal effects. Or rather, what well, made it off of Asian Kloss during the attack. With Commander Solo's passing and in light of Ben's situation, I feel she would want you to have these, Chewbacca. 
Chewbacca whimpers out some form of acceptance. I'll give you a moment. Chewie begins to parse through the bins. He recovers some books and sets them aside. Beneath the books, he finds some rings, scraps of communication with friends and family, and Han's medal. He holds the medal in his hands and gazes at it longingly. Ray picks up one of the tomes and rifles through it. Between two of the pages, she discovers a power. What's that? Chewie looks over and grunts something. Hmm. From Alderaan. Hmm. Chewie affirms. She must have been carrying this with her for more than 40 years. Ray cups the flower in her hand. Chewie, do you mind? He shakes his head and grunts a reply. Hmm. Ray looks out to the plains of Lamu and to Leia's memorial. Exterior, Lamu surface, sunrise. Ray approaches the collection of rocks that serve as a monument to the departed general. She kneels down and places the dried flower in the dirt at the base of the memorial. Thank you for everything. She presses her hands into the dirt, unintentionally, but caught up in the moment. A tear rolls down her face. She isn't sure what else to say. In the distance, Poe emerges from the array of ships. He calls out to her. Ray, we're lifting off. She wipes her face and stands. She turns to leave, but notices the dead flower, pressed for decades between the pages of a journal, is now bright with life, a piece of home for the princess of Alderaan. Exterior, Rishi orbit, day. The falcon drops out of hyperspace above the tropical planet Rishi. Exterior, Rishi metropolitan center, day. The Falcon lands on a docking, in a docking facility overlooking the sea. Interior, Millennium Falcon Bridge, same time. Poe and Chewbacca sit in the pilot and co-pilot seats, Ray in the passengers. Poe begins to flick various switches to power down the Falcon. You're sure that we'll be all right to just land out here in the open? I've got us running a spoof transponder, which should keep anyone but the truly paranoid from giving us a second look. And with as far out as we are from the core... Freighter like ours will blend in a lot more easily than if we were trying to land on, say, Naboo. Let's hope so. Exterior, Rishi landing pad, same time. Finn, Rose, Maz, and BB-8 descend the ramp into the landing facility. We'll need to make our way through the city to my contact's warehouse. The building operates under the guise of a First Order munitions depot, so don't be thrown off by its aggressive exterior. Noted. Poe, Ray, and Chewie descend the ramp. The engines of the Falcon whine to a halt. Maz looks to Ray. Ready? Lead the way. Exterior, Rishi Metropolitan Center, day. Maz leads a group of... Maz, Maz leads the ragtag group of rebels through the bustling streets. Ray takes in everything around her. Every new planet she visits is an oasis of experiences not known to her life on Jakku. It's just up ahead. <laughs> The road widens into a city square. Across the way, the crew of the Falcon observe a nondescript building adorned in First Order banners. Several troopers patrol the front of the structure. Maz boldly strides across the square while the rest of the crew hesitate to follow. They watch as Maz speaks to one of the troopers. The trooper nods. Maz turns and beckons for the crew to come over. Interior Trooper Warehouse moments later. The crew enter the warehouse. It's full of First Order stormtroopers. The trooper Maz spoke to outside leads the group to a room in the back of the building. Everyone but Maz and the trooper seem tense. Poe has a hand on his holster. The trooper stands at the door to the next room. They turn to the anxious rebels. The, cap Jeez. the captain is inside. The trooper pushes the door open and gestures for the crew to enter. Maz leads the way. The rest of the crew follow shortly after. Interior, warehouse executive suite, continuous. The Falcon's crew enter to see Lando Calrissian welcoming Maz with open arms. Maz Kanata, what brings the pirate queen to my humble neck of the woods? That sultry voice of yours, of course. Lando chuckles. <laughs> Chewie pushes past the rest of the group to hug the caped man. The Wookiee bellows out a greeting as he wraps Lando in his arms. <laughs> I missed you too, you big furball. The Wookiee sets Lando down, and the old general looks into Chewie's eyes. How are you doing? Chewie <laughs> growls something halfway between sorrow and acceptance. <laughs> A moment passes before Maz turns to the crew. My friends, I'd like to introduce you to Lando Calrissian, our guide through the Outer Rim. Poe steps forward. Lando you know, Calrissian, 
It is an honor. If I had known we were coming to see you... Lando holds up a hand to interrupt the doe-eyed pilot. Please, call me Lando. What's your name, son? Poe Dameron, sir. Shara's boy? Yes, sir. Did you know her? (laughs) She was an extraordinary pilot. Yes, she was. Lando looks to the rest of the group. Who else did Maz rope into this adventure? Rose extends a hand. Rose Tico, sir. Flight engineer. Charm. Finn steps forward. Finn, uh, Gunner, I guess, if we're talking about roles on the Falcon. You flew here in the Falcon? Yes, sir. Lando turns to Poe for a moment. I hope you got your mother's instincts, Dameron. I'd like to think so. Lando turns back to Ray. And who might you be? Ray. She extends a hand to Lando. He takes it. She'll be leading the, the sortie on Camino. Well, Ray, it is a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. He turns back to Maz. So let's talk details. I'll get the drinks. Interior warehouse sometime later. Everyone sits around a table in the faux First Order Munitions Depot. Ray lays out the details of their plan, what few they have. You'll need to get us as close as you can to the cloning facilities so that we can set demolition charges at key points to bring the whole compound down. Well, luckily for all of you, getting to Camino is going to be the easiest part of this trip. Camino is only 12 parsecs beyond the Rishi Maze, so we're already in the neighborhood. Trouble is, ever since the First Order locked down the hyperlanes, they're requiring special security codes to get anywhere beyond the end of the maze. What kind of security codes? Transponder encryption codes. There's a First Order security briar office here in the city that'll probably have what we need. I can have some of my troopers get you in. I just installed a new scomp link on BB-8. If you can get us into the Bureau office, we can get the code. Easy. What then? As much as I'd like to take the Falcon, we've got an unofficially decommissioned shuttle that would make getting past the maze blockade a lot easier. We've also got scores of old uniforms and armor that'll make infiltrating the cloning factories much simpler. Poe. Sounds like the only wild card now is what to actually expect on the surface. Oh, the surface is all ocean. The only solid ground you'll set foot on are those factories. See? That's a good detail to have. Let's focus on those security codes first. How soon can we get them? Lando checks a tablet on the table. There is a shift change at the Bureau office in three hours. I'll have a squad ready to take you there in two. Great. In the meantime, how about some food? Chewy howls. Mm. Interior warehouse mess hall day sometime later. Lando leads the crew into a rudimentary mess hall. Several handfuls of stormtroopers are gathered at tables or standing around talking to one another. Very few wear their helmets in this room. Lando approaches one helmetless trooper who is reading battle reports at a nearby table. This is Jana, my commanding officer. She served on the Harbinger. Wait, you're an ex-trooper? And I think because of conflicts with the others, Lauren, this will be you as well. Sure am, TZ-1719. FN-2187. I didn't know there were others. Yeah, well, the First Order likes to keep things like that very hush-hush. Make people think there's no way out. Have a seat, please. He gestures to the crew. They all take places around the table. Jana stows her tablet to make room. Lando then gestures to some out-of-uniform folks who leave to collect some food. Jana here can get you into the security bureau. I should hope so. It leaks like a sieve. What's this about? This crew is headed to Camino for a classified op. They'll need transponder codes for the blockade. Right on. You've got a way to transfer the data? Our BB BB unit has a scomp link. That'll do. You'll just need to get her and the droid into the bureau. Then we can rendezvous at Lando's shuttle. The G-class be commandeered on Braca. Gotcha. Well, that seems simple enough. The First Order contingents that patrol here are pushed over. She looks to Rose. I'll get someone to take you to the stockade and find you a maintenance uniform. And maybe some new plates for the droid. Oh, that might be good. Last time we just put a trash can over him. What? Jana calls out to a nearby trooper. Zay, come over here and help. She looks to Rose. Rose Tico. Uh, Miss Tico to the stockade. Find her something that would blend in at the bureau. 
And the nearby trooper, Zay Versio, jumps over and extends a hand to Rose. Rose takes it. And Thorin, this is still you. Zay Versio. Rose Kiko, nice to meet you. Come on, I'll show you where uh, we keep the good. She departs, leading Rose and BB to other parts of the warehouse. Lando looks to Poe. You ever flown a G-Class shuttle? Are they anything like the T-4As? Lando stands. Close. The Gs are essentially just modified Lambdas, but the control scheme is pretty different since the Jameis Corporation took over, seeing our fleet systems. Come on, I'll give you the tour. Come on, Chewie. Let's go check this out. Poe and Chewie stand and follow Lando from the hangar. Ray turns to Jana. Is it safe if I take a look outside? I've never been in a city like this before. Sure. Just don't do anything to draw attention to yourself, and you should be fine. I can go with you. Maz places a hand on his arm. No, you stay. I can keep the girl company. She looks up at Ray and smiles. Ray smiles too. She looks to Finn. We'll be careful. She and Maz return to the entrance of the warehouse, and the only ones left at the table are Finn and Janna, the ex-troopers. The briefest of awkward silences passes. So, you said you were a stormtrooper too? What was your post? FN Corps. Trained under Captain Phasma, but eventually posted to Starkiller base until I defected on Jakku. Jana goes wide-eyed. You trained with Phasma? And you made it out? You told stories about her in barracks. She was a legend. But, you know, a, a bad one. <laughs> like the Sith or the Dark Wraith of Sarosha. How'd you get out? I was a walker pilot on Malastare. There was this one collection of Dugs who just refused to seed us their refinery. They brought everyone from the surrounding countryside to the refinery. Men, women, children, all civilians, to keep us from forcing our way in. That was exactly the order that came down from the command. Storm the facility. Kill everyone. I, I couldn't do it. Before the attack, me and a few other folks from the squad stole transport and made for whatever port would take us. Damn. He takes a look around. And everyone hears X First Order? Just about. Captain Calrissian is the obvious exception. He was actually the first one that let our transport land. Bespin ended up being our safe haven. And it was his idea to turn us into a weapon against the First Order. What kind of weapon? Well, it wasn't much at first. But now anytime we hear of the First Order amassing a fleet or setting up martial law in an unoccupied system, we, we sneak in with the influx of troops and poke the inside of the rank, ranker until it bleeds. A nexu in Bantha's clothing. <laughs> exactly. Finn chuckles. <laughs> I still can't believe there are others out there like me. Jana smiles. Exterior, Rishi Metropolitan Center, day. Ray walks through a crowded marketplace, taking in all the sights, sounds, and smells. Maz walks beside her. Have you ever been in a place like this? Oh yes, many times over many years. I don't know if I'll ever be used to it. Before the rise of the Empire, the Galactic Senate convened on a planet called Coruscant, which was itself a city. A city the size of a planet? In a way, yes. There is a natural planet beneath the metropolis, but I imagine it has been many lifetimes since anyone has seen it. The road opens up to reveal a promenade overlooking the ocean. Ray steps up to the railing and looks longingly at the sea. Did you ever know Ben? Maz steps up beside her. I knew Han and Leia, but I never had the privilege of meeting their son. I could always sense him, though. A tug here, a flash there. Glimpses of the boy beneath the mask. I thought I could turn him. I was so sure of it. I'd seen the vision clear as you were standing here with me. She pauses. What happened to him? Maz ponders. If all a person ever hears is, this is who you are, even if they know in their heart of hearts that they're not, they may begin to believe it. And once that doubt sets in, there may be little hope the spread of the lie can be stopped. She lingers on this thought. But sometimes hope is all we have. Ray looks down at the diminutive alien and sees a smile form on her orange face. But the calm is broken by a crackle in the sky above them. Ray looks up to see a First Order shuttle descending upon the city. Exterior, First Order landing pad, same time. At the landing pad near the security bureau, several Knights of Ren depart the First Order shuttle. A bureau officer greets them. 
Did we pick a Bryce? Do you want to be the officer since Hux is dead? Excuse me. We don't have a scheduled landing here for another two days. What is your business on Rishi? Where'd Ian go? Oh, I'm here. The Supreme Leader has received word of resistance. Soldiers impersonating our troops here in the city. You wouldn't know anything of that, would you? The knight looks to the officer's lapel. Captain. The rest of the knights turn menacingly towards the captain. No, no gentlemen. The security bureau is loyal to the last. Whoever these interlopers are, please, our forces are at your disposal. He gestures into the building. The head knight nods. Thank you, Captain. Exterior, Rishi Metropolitan Center, day. Ray runs through the crowded marketplace, jostling past all manner of alien folk. Maz follows, but with greater difficulty given her stature. They burst into the square, preceding the foe First Order warehouse, and sprint to the entrance. Interior, warehouse continuous. Ray and Maz rush through the warehouse to the executive suite. Some of the troops look up at the ruckus. Interior, warehouse, executive suite, continuous. Lando and Poe are laughing about something when Ray enters. Chewie is fiddling with some sort of mechanical component. The First Order, they're here. Jana and Finn enter the suite. We saw you run in. What's happening? We need to evacuate. Sound the alarm. Interior warehouse continuous. As Ray, Maz, Poe, Chewie, Lando, Finn, and Janna exit the suite, an explosion rips through the main doors of the warehouse. The Knights of Ren slip through the smoke, followed by other stormtroopers. The warehouse erupts in laser fire. Many of the fake stormtroopers are out of uniform, making them easy marks for the real stormtroopers. The Knights notice the crew of the Falcon and begin to advance across the warehouse. The landing pad. Janna leads the party out a side door. Exterior, warehouse landing pad, continuous. Jana, Landa, and most of the Jana, Lando, and most of the crew of the Falcon emerge onto a landing pad attached to the side of the warehouse. The edge of the landing pad overlooks tiers and tiers of the town as the city descends down towards the shore. A G-class shuttle sits on the pad. Jana closes the warehouse door behind them and searches for something to wedge it closed. Get Captain Calrissian to the shuttle. As the crew makes their way across the pad, a First Order Zephyr GB-134 rises from the lower levels of the city and fires on the shuttle. The, in the ensuing explosion throws everyone to the ground and cracks the landing pad. Everyone but Jana and Lando are on the burning shuttle's side of the crack. The weight of the shuttle pulls at the damage, and the landing pad begins to separate. Poe, Chewie, Ray, and Maz begin to slide down the pad. Ray and Maz landing in the street below more gracefully than the others. Jana reaches across the gap and takes Finn's hand, who is now dangling above the street below. The warehouse is aflame as strands of fire begin to rise from the building and lick the skies above the city. The landing pad is compromised and the supports below it begin to buckle. Jana and Finn cascade over the side. Exterior, Rishi Metropolitan Center, continuous. In the street below, the rest of the Falcon's crew begin to recover. The Zephyr swoops overhead. Chewie nails one of the engines with a blast from his bowcaster, and the light craft is sent careening into a nearby building. Ray and Poe help Jana and Finn up from the ground. Several stormtroopers come around the corner. Freeze! Don't move! I, re I now remember this character. Poe shoots the loud trooper with his blaster. <laughs> and now he's dead. She leads them through the streets, uh, followed closely by the remaining troopers. They run down various alleys and gaps in the city's urban crawl. The sounds of the pursuing troopers grow quieter and quieter. They arrive at a sewer grate. Jana lifts it up. Get in. Everyone descends into the city's depths. Exterior, warehouse landing pad, continuous. Back on the landing pad, Lando is captured by the Knights of Ren. Take this one back to the ship. The Supreme Leader will have questions for him. Exterior, Rishi Metropolitan Center, day sometime later. The burning warehouse can be seen in the distance, the smoke from the fire billowing in the wind. Its location on one of the higher tiers of the city makes it the most prominent feature of the city's skyline, at least for the moment. A grate on the ground jiggles and pops up out of its cobblestone home. A hand emerges, Jana's. She climbs out of the sewer to soon be followed by Chewie, Finn, Poe, Ray, and Maz. We've got a safe house close by. Come on. 
interior safe house moments later. Rose, BB-8, Zay, and a handful of other assorted foe troopers mill about anxiously. Everyone tenses as the doors to the safe house open. Jana leads the Falcon's crew inside. The atmosphere shifts from tension to relief. Rose runs to hug Finn. BB frantically rolls to Poe. We saw the fire and heard explosions. We didn't think you made it. Nah, we're all still here. Where's Lando? First Order got him. Probably taking him back to the Star Destroyer. Anyone who could get us on Camino? Are you saying we leave Captain Calrissian with the First Order? Of course not, but we need to get to Camino soon, or none of this will matter. He looks to Maz. She shakes her head. No one we could contact in enough time. So we get Lando back. We have First Order uniforms. All we need is a way on, into their ship. You know, this raid, they're only going to be more paranoid about who's going in and out of their ships. Our transport is clean and has current codes. How soon could it be ready to launch? As long as the First Order hasn't found the hangar, as soon as you need it. Ray turns to Poe, Finn, and Rose. If Jonna can get you on board the ship, can you get to Lando? In theory, it'll be getting back off the ship that will be the problem. I can disable the weapon systems if someone could lead me to engineering. I can do that. That thing in orbit is the same make as the Harbinger. I can get you anywhere. Okay, so Finn and Poe will find Lando and get him back to the ship. Rose and Jonna will disable the cannons. Chewie growls something. <laughs> yes, that's a good idea. Chewie and BB-8 can stay with the transport in case things get dicey. I'll go to the security bureau and get our transponder codes. I'll meet you all back at the Falcon once you're off the Star Destroyer. Wait, you can't go alone. It's the only way that this can work. I've spent my whole life rooting through Imperial tech. I can handle this. Maz? Ray is right. We need to let the Resistance know of the change of plans. She turns to Zay. Can you get Maz to Lemu? Yeah, we've, we've got more ships scattered around the city. Will you be all right? More than all right. Ray surveys the group. All right, let's go. Interior, steadfast command deck, same time. The doors to the steadfast command deck open and Lando is led through them by a pair of stormtroopers. He is guided to general pride. My, my, the famous Landonis Balthazar Calrissian. Most people just call me Lando. We know several resistance leaders were sent to meet you on Rishi. What did they want? Just ships. You've seen the state of their fleet, I'm sure. Indeed. He looks Lando over, seemingly attempting to determine if there is more information to be gleaned from the old pilot. A moment passes, and Pride turns back to the windows of the command deck. Take him to the detention block. Interior steadfast hangar, same time. Kylo Ren's TIE silencer touches down in one of the steadfast's hangars. Interior steadfast hall, moments later. Kylo Ren walks down the hall toward the command center. Interior, steadfast command deck, moments later. The doors open and Kylo is surprised to see the face of Lando Calrissian. He is genuinely startled. Lando wasn't expecting this reunion either. Ben? Kylo can't muster any words. You've grown. Lando is led away. Kylo watches him go before turning his attention to General Pride. When did General Calrissian arrive? Only a short time ago. Why wasn't I informed? He turns to Ren. Supreme Leader, we tried to contact you, but your ship's signal was beyond our reach. But no matter. The Knights captured Captain Calrissian during a raid on the surface. He looks down to Rishi. Perhaps you could assist them. Several resistance leaders escaped, including the girl who killed Supreme Leader Snoke. Kylo looks down to the surface as well. Interior, Rishi, commercial hangar, soon after. Jana pulls a large tarp off a First Order AAL troop transport. She lowers the boarding ramp, and she, Rose, Finn, Poe, Chewie, and BB-8 board the ship. Never thought I'd be in one of these again. Exterior, Rishi, commercial hangar, day, moments later. The AAL takes off from the hangar and heads for the atmosphere. Exterior, Rishi, Metropolitan Center, day, same time. Ray watches as the AAL soars off into the distance. She looks across the city to the security bureau. Interior, stolen troop transport, same time. 
Finn, Poe, and Rose are each donning Stormtrooper armor. Poe is having trouble with his suit. How'd you ever get used to wearing this? This is absolutely no give anywhere in the suit. Can't get your button to the armor? That is exactly the problem. Rose slips on her helmet. How do I look? Stand up straighter. Rose changes her stance. That's good. As much as you can, don't slouch. Everything is about precision. Sharp movements, deliberate motion. It's called the first order for a reason. Look. Look like you've got yourself in order. Yeah, my butt is definitely going to be a problem. Headed in for landing. All right. Let me do the talking. Interior. Secondary steadfast hangar. Same time. Several stormtroopers watch as the AAL comes in for a landing. The ship touches down and lowers its boarding ramp. An officer steps up to the ramp as it descends. Uh, I'll do it. <clears throat> do it. This transports transponders two weeks out of circulation. We reappropriated the ship from the resistant outpost on the surface. It'll need a sweep to make sure they haven't sabotaged it. Oh, I'll have a team up here right away. Finn and the others walk past the officer as he dials some instructions into a tablet. It'll need a sweep? The bomb squads are two-man crews. Chewie can handle it. I needed to give him a problem that was more important than our identification. That way he can look better to a superior officer. Officers can't resist bait like that. Good thinking. Interior. Steadfast hall. Continuous. The quartet emerges into the hall beyond the hangar. Everyone know what they're doing? Yes, ready to go. Be safe, be quick. Same to you. This way. Rose and Jana depart. Finn and Poe head in the opposite direction. Exterior, Rishi Metropolitan Center. Day, same time. Ray, hood up, heads f through the city towards the security bureau, deftly avoiding troopers as they cull through the crowds, seeking identification papers from suspicious passersby. Exterior, bureau complex. Day, moments later. Ray watches as a pair of stormtroopers emerge from behind a gate in the wall surrounding the security bureau. As the doors begin to close, she slips through the gap and into the complex. Interior, bureau complex, same time. Ray navigates through the complex, ducking into alcoves and waiting around corners as she avoids the security patrols. Exterior, Rishi landing pad, day, same time. Kylo's TIE silencer touches down on Rishi. The Knights of Ren await his arrival. Interior, Bureau Data Center, moments later. Ray steps through a door and is surprised by a First Order Data Technician. He, too, is surprised by her presence and reaches for a comm link. Before he can send an SOS, she uses the Force to persuade him otherwise. Everything is all right. Everything is all right. You want to upload Rishi May's blockade codes to this packet. She pulls an empty data packet from her pouch. He takes it. I want to upload Rishi May's blockade codes to this packet. He inserts the packet into a console and taps a few keys. Thank you. The technician smiles, pleased to be of service. Exterior Bureau Complex Day moments later, Kylo Ren leads the knights to the security bureau. I want all combat, combat and drone readings, read, readouts of this raid. We can't leave Rishi without. He pauses, sensing something. Without what, Supreme Leader? He realizes. He looks to the complex. She's here. The borough has been compromised. Rigged the ability for demolition. Yes, Supreme Leader. Kylo enters the complex. Interior, Steadfast Hall, same time. Rose and Jana stroll down the halls of the Steadfast toward engineering, periodically nodding to passing troopers as their paths cross. They turn a corner to the engineering bay. A door blocks their path. You're up. Rose opens a wall panel and fiddles with some wires. She pulls her necklace out of one of her belt pouches and uses it to complete the circuit. Jana looks over her shoulder. Casey and Smelt. Jana nods. It's a good conductor. The door slides open. They enter the engineering bay. Interior, steadfast turbo lift, same time. Finn and Poe stand shoulder to shoulder as the turbo lift ascends through the steadfast. You said deck five, yeah? Unless they're reassigned these things since I left. Redesign these things since I left. The turbo lift stops and two other troopers get on. They're carrying a container between them. Finn, Poe, and the troopers nod and exchange pleasantries. The troopers turn towards the door as it closes, now standing with their backs to Finn and Poe. This was Will and Ian, but does somebody want to pick up uh, the other 
trooper container that Will is not. Uh, which one is it? Trooper Dylan. one. Trooper okay. one. Wait, uh, I can do it. Other Will can do it. Who was that? <laughs> Other Will, you do it. All right, Trooper one, right? Yeah. All this is going to Camino. That's what GX twenty two eighty seven said. General Pride has taken a bunch of this garbage there on his shuttle. Finn and Poe look to each other. Aren't there maintenance crews for that can schlep this stuff around? Would you rather be on the surface? He leans a little closer to the other trooper, his voice quieting. I heard the Jedi that killed Supreme Leader Snoke is down there. What? That's who the knights are tracking. Finn looks down to the container. Something about it is tugging at the edges of his mind. Who told you that? RT-2142. RT-2142 is a liar, and you know what? She's just messing with you. Whatever. I'd still rather be up here than down there. Finn sets his blaster to stun. Poe notices and does the same. They blast the troopers in the back. The turbo lift stops soon after. The container troopers are in heaps on the floor. Exterior, Steadfast Hall, continuous. Finn and Poe disembark the turbo lift with the Camino container. The turbo lift closes and flies further into the ship, carrying its unconscious cargo with it. All right, do you want to tell me why we stunned those troopers and stole this box instead of going to the detention block? This chest is important. I can't explain why. There was just something about it that I felt, I don't know, calling to me? You mean like the force? I don't know, man. Let's just get it open. Poe and Finn duck into an alcove and examine the container. Finn releases the locks and slides the lid onto the floor, setting it down gently to avoid drawing undue attention. Inside the chest, on a bed of red silk, are a quintet of lightsabers. Holy hell. Finn is stunned, not at all expecting to see this kind of cargo. What is Pride doing sending a bunch of lightsabers to Kamino? Those troopers said there were more containers like this one. Do you think the First Order is manufacturing Jedi clones? I don't know if that's possible. I don't think that's how the Force works. Well, what else is he doing with all of these? Nothing good. Poe peeks out from the alcove. We should get going. We've lost too much time already. Finn lingers over the bin of sabers. Poe looks back to him. Finn. Finn takes one of the sabers. Interior, Bureau Data Center, same time. Ray watches over the data technician's shoulder as a progress bar crawls across the screen. It is almost full. Suddenly, the doors to the data center open. Kylo Ren stands in the doorway. The data technician stands. Supreme Leader, it is an honor. Ren sees the progress bar. He reaches out to the technician and force lifts him off the ground. No! Ray pushes back against Kylo, throwing him into the wall. The data technician drops to the ground. Ray helps him up. Leave. Get as far away from here as you can. The technician does not need the force to persuade him. He runs. Kylo pushes off from the wall. He steadies himself, but does not advance on Ray. Don't go to Kamino. What? I can see what codes you're downloading. I know you've been working with Lando. Don't go to Kamino. What if... What have you done to Lando? Lando's fine. That's not the... Don't lie to me. The files finish downloading. I've never lied to you. Ray Force pulls the data packet from the console. I'm going to Camino. Whatever the First Order is doing there, I'm going to stop it. She pulls her saber from her belt and ignites it. This is not the outcome he wanted. He ignites his saber. Interior, steadfast engineering, same time. Rose and Jana weave through the rows and rows of pipes and power converters, finally coming to a bundle of power cells Rose recognizes. This is it. She begins a sequence to remove the power cells from their containers. Interior, steadfast detention block, same time. Finn and Poe emerge into the detention block. The rows, and the rows of cells spiderweb out from a central terminal monitored by a detention officer. Guards patrol the halls. Poe sets his blaster back to kill, but Finn notices. No, follow my lead. They approach the detention officer. Can I help you? Yes, we're transferring Captain Calrissian to General Pride's shuttle for transport back to the core world. Supreme Leader's orders. The officer looks over his logs. 
I don't see a prisoner transfer on the logs. When was this approved? Are you questioning the commands of the Supreme Leader? What's your identification number? No, no, it's it's just... And removes a comlink from his belt. He holds it to his mask as if a threat. Your identification number or the prisoner's cell? The officer looks over his logs. Cell 35F. Long live the Supreme Leader. Long, long live the Supreme Leader. Finn and Poe head for Lando's cell. The cell door opens. Captain Calrissian, you're coming with us. Lando recognizes the voice. So I am. They lead Lando back down detention block to the hub and then towards the door. Finn looks back as the, at the officer as they leave. Thank you for your cooperation. Glory to the First Order. The doors to the detention block close behind them, and the officer punches some buttons on his console. Interior, steadfast engineering, same time. Rose pulls the last of the power cells from its housing. The distant sound of machinery winding down can be heard. We'll only have a few minutes before they notice the guns are offline. Let's move. Interior, steadfast hall. Moments later, Rose and Jana head back toward the hangar bay. They pass a pair of specialist troopers. As they walk, they overhear a discussion on the troopers' comms. Bryce and uh, somebody else. You be, be advised. Uh, I'm, I'm already a specialist trooper. <laughs> oh, sorry. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, keep good. going. Be advised. Possible unsanctioned prisoner transfer to Bay 4. Roger. Headed there now. The troopers move along. Lando? M maybe. Let's, let's get to the hangar. Interior steadfast hangar. Moments later, Rose and Jana enter the hangar and approach the stolen AAL. They ascend up the boarding ramp. Interior, stolen troop transport continuous. Chewie stands over two unconscious stormtroopers. A discarded bomb detection kit sits beside them. Rose removes her helmet. Any word from the boys? Chewie yelps a response. Hmm. The detention blocks are further from the hangars than engineering. It's possible they're fine, just not back yet. As if in response, a klaxon rings out in the hangar. Rose descends back down the ramp. Interior, steadfast hangar, continuous. Rose watches as several groups of stormtroopers run past the hangar. Several tense moments pass before Finn, Poe, and Lando enter the hangar. Rose re-enters the ship. Interior, stolen troop transport, continuous. Chewie, they're here. Get this thing powered up. Chewie howls a response. <clears throat> the ship begins to power up. Finn, Poe, and Lando enter up the ramp. Captain Calrissian, glad to have you back. You didn't think you were all going on this little adventure without me, did you? Chewie lets out a Wookiee chuckle. <laughs> Exterior, Rishi orbit, day, same time. The AAL emerges from the steadfast and dives for the surface. Interior, Bureau hall, same time. Ray and Kylo slash their way down a corridor in the security bureau. Ray doesn't recognize it, but this is the hallway from the vision she received when she first touched Anakin's lightsaber. The hall opens up onto a gantry overlooking the sea. Exterior, Bureau gantry, day, continuous. The fight continues down the gantry. Ray's blows are frustrated, brutal. Kylo's are deliberate, focused. She is tiring. He is not. Exterior, bureau complex, day, same time. Outside the bureau, the knights finish setting demolition charges. Charge is set, sir. The primary knight looks up the bureau. Detonate. Exterior, bureau gantry, day, same time. The fight moves further down the gantry. Without warning, the complex behind the combatants explodes in a flash of flame and metal. The shockwave from the blast throws Kylo and Rey from their feet. Kylo, battered and bruised, is the first to lift himself off the ground. He reaches out for a weapon and finds Rey's saber the closest option. But the moment he touches it, a vision flashes in his mind. Rey, dead on a clean white floor. Laughter is heard in the distance. He flashes back to reality and finds himself turned around, facing the sea. Ray stirs and pushes herself off the floor. She reaches out for Kylo's saber. Overcome with emotions, anger, fear, doubt, love, hope, she ignites the homemade saber and stabs Kylo in the back. He is in shock, as is she. He looks down to see the crackling blade protruding from his gut. Clarity and regret flood Ray's heart. She turns off the saber. Kylo collapses backward, and she catches him as he falls. She wraps her arms around him and eases him to the floor. Cradling him from behind, she reaches for his wound. Remembering the flower on the moo, she steadies her breathing and focuses on the point of impact. He looks down, feeling something change, and is awed as he watches the wound close. Ray lets out a sigh and slumps forward into Kylo's back, exhausted by the process. 
Kylo's own breathing steadies now that the puncture is closed. Her arms are still wrapped around him. He places a hand on hers. He feels her arms tighten ever so slightly around him. She speaks, her voice quiet as she recovers. I did want to take your hand. He was not expecting that. Tears well in his eyes. Ben's hand. He starts to cry. He hardly notices as her hand slips from beneath his, her footfalls retreating into the distance. Once again, Kylo Ren is alone. Exterior Rishi landing pad day. The engines of the AAL wind down and Finn, Poe, Lando, Chewie, BB-8, Jana, and Rose disembark and head across the landing pad to the Falcon. Across the city to see smoke pouring from the security bureau. Before he has time to ask anyone about it, Ray steps onto the landing pad from the street below. Ray. Ray is visibly upset. She hands him the data packet and boards the Falcon without a word. Poe descends the ramp. Finn, we're taking off. Finn follows him onto the Falcon. Interior, steadfast command deck moments later. General Pride watches as the Falcon rises from the Rishi in atmosphere and jumps off into hyperspace. An officer watches over his shoulder. Should we pursue, sir? No. He turns and begins to walk the length of the command deck. There's nothing they can do to stop us now. Exterior, Bureau Gi Day, same. Kyle Gantry and is out at the sea. Suddenly, there is a voice behind him. Ben. Kylo struggles to lift himself from the ground, but slowly stands and turns to face the apparition. I miss you, son. Your son is dead. The memory of Han steps forward. No, Kylo Ren is dead. My son is alive. Kylo turns from him, unable to maintain eye contact. You're just a memory. Han pauses. Come home. Kylo turns back to him. It's too late. She's gone. I couldn't stop it. Yes, your mother's gone. But what she stood for, what she fought for, that's not gone. He steps closer. Ben. Kylo looks into his father's eyes. I know what I have to do. But I don't know if I have the strength to do it. He holds his saber out. You can. Kylo pauses. Dad. He intends for three words to follow, but something traps them on the tip of his tongue. Han reads the words on his son's face. I know. Kylo looks down at his saber, and in a burst of strength, cracks the homemade saber in two. When he looks up, Han is gone. Saber halves in hand. Ben looks back out to the sea. Exterior, Lamu surface, day. The Falcon sits beside dozens of other resistance ships. New to the fleet is a First Order Lancer-class frigate courtesy of Lando's foe troopers. At nearly double the length of the fleet's familiar CR-90 corvettes, the frigate dominates the landing area. Engineers and, te and technicians dart about amongst the myriad craft, fueling up ships, repairing this or that, general battle prep stuff. Interior, Millennium Falcon, Ray's chambers, same time. Ray sobs in her room. There is a knock outside. She does her best to compose herself and opens the door. Hey. Hey. She steps away from the door and goes to sit on the edge of her bunk. So I gave the codes to Rose and she's uploading them to the fleet. Mission accomplished. Ray smiles mirthlessly. Poe says the generals are waiting for you for a briefing. Oh, oh wait a minute. that was not my line. My bad. I was uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm assuming I'm supposed to say the generals are waiting for you for a briefing. Yes. Yes. I don't know. My what's bad. A, that's a typo from me. Uh, she sits in silence. Memories of Rishi swirling in her mind. I could have killed him. She lets the silence linger for a moment. He knows who she's talking about. Kylo. Back on the island, Luke said he saw darkness in me. I thought I was strong enough to keep it buried, but... She looks up at Finn. I wanted to kill him. Finn goes to sit beside her. Hey, we've all done things we're not proud of. 
I was a stormtrooper, remember? But you left because you couldn't kill those people. I wanted to kill Ben. I only felt it for a moment, but... But that's not who you are. I know, I, I know it. I can feel it. I'm not fit to lead these people. If Leia knew that I tried to kill her son... Her head falls into her hands. You know, even after I escaped from the First Order, I was sure I didn't want anything to do with the Resistance. Even that day when we stole the Falcon and Han caught us and we ended up at Maz's castle, I knew I was going to run as far as, as the nearest transport could take me. She remains secluded in her hands. But I realized I saw something in you that I wished I could see in myself. You were the bright spot in the universe I wanted to be. I wanted to be better than the man the First Order had made me to be. You put that spark in me. She lifts her head to look at him. The Resistance needs people like you, Ray. People like you and Leia. People who inspire us to be better than we are. He stands. So believe me, I understand the urge to run, but I hope you find the reason to stay. He waits for a moment before heading to the door. Interior, steadfast command deck, same time. The Knights of Ren, having returned from their conquest on Rishi, enter the command deck of the steadfast. General Pride greets them. Ah, the warriors return. He notices Kylo is not with them. Where is the Supreme Leader? One of the knights steps forward. Kylo's cloak is draped across their arm. He tosses it to the floor. We think he was killed by the scavenger. As we approached the security bureau, the Supreme Leader indicated he could sense the girl's presence within. He ordered us to prep the building for demolition and then enter the complex to pursue her. We recovered his cloak from a gantry on one of the upper levels. We presume he was either killed by the scavenger in combat or perished in the explosion. How tragic. And the girl? We found no trace of her, indicating she too was either killed in the explosion or escaped the complex beforehand. Hmm. Pride turns out to the windows. Well, in that case, we'll need to find a new Supreme Leader. Send an alert to any First Order ships in this sector. Set a course for Camino. Interior, Lamu Base, night. Resistance VIPs gather around a planning table. Lando is explaining the layout of several of the Camino factories as displayed on a hollow projector built into the table. This is the main cloning facility. There are a number of structures like this one dotted along the surface. Some residential, some for vehicle production, but these ones are where the Republic's magic happened. There are landing pads at key points around the factories, and if we can set charges at... She points to several points along the projection, indicating the supporting, fillers, the supporting pillars of the factory. Here, here, and here. We think the structure will collapse into the sea. Finn and I also discovered that the First Order has been collecting old Jedi artifacts and transporting them to Kamino. What use would they have for Jedi artifacts? Maybe to train the clones as Jedi? As a kid, I remember stories about a droid commander in the Clone Wars who'd been trained as a Jedi... If someone could teach a droid, why not a clone? Finn sets his lightsaber down on the table. The troopers we took this from said there were even more crates like the one we found, meaning there could be hundreds or even thousands of these weapons in the hands of the First Order. A new army of Jedi under the command of the First Order. It would be the end of the Resistance. Rey enters the camp. We won't let that happen. Commander, we were just going over the strike plans for Kamino. Carry on, please. Using Lando's stolen First Order ships and uniforms, and the codes Ray collected from the Security Bureau, we'll rendezvous with the First Order fleet in orbit around Camino. Strike teams will dive into the surface and land at set points around the factory. Once we're on the ground, the primary teams will repel down the factory pillars and set charges, while secondary teams will enter the factory to disable and detonate the cloning assembly. We don't know how much resistance we'll encounter on the surface, so we're going incognito for as long as possible. A shooting match is probably inevitable, but the longer we can go without blowing our cover, the better. What do you think, Commander? She looks to him and smiles. Let's ready the fleet. Exterior, Lamu surface, dawn. Montage. Engineers fueling ships. Soldiers loading cargo onto transports. Resistance troops donning First Order armor and uniforms, etc. Poe addresses the troops. Ray stands beside him. Finn, Rose, Jana, Chewie, and the other key resistance figures are dotted amongst the throng. All right, everyone. Here's the deal. This mission is as black ops as they come. 
We're operating with limited intel behind enemy lines, so if you get in over your head, don't try to be a hero. Just get out of there. But if we're successful, we may just be able to deal a death blow to the First Order. He looks over the ragtag assembly of soldiers. Everyone have their orders? Various cheers and yes sirs emanate from the crowd. Poe looks to Ray. Would you like to do the honors? Ray looks out to the troops. Ready yourselves. May the force be with us. Everyone cheers again and heads for the frigate. Interior, Lancer-class hangar bay, moments later. Ray observes the meager forces of the resistance pour into the hangar of the newly christened Leia Organa. The faces of the troops are joyful, optimistic, ready to do their part for the cause. Finn approaches. Hey. I'm glad you stayed. Thanks for the speech. Please, it's the least I could do for someone who saved my life on more than one occasion. Yeah, that score is really uneven. Well, if you teach me how to use this, maybe I can balance the scales. He shows her the lightsaber. You think I'm qualified for the job? There's only one way to find out. She smiles, and he returns the favor. They hear the sound of engines powering up. Exterior, la mousse surface continuous. Maz, Daisy, and a handful of other resistance officers watch as the Leia Organa lifts off from the surface and heads out into the inky beyond. Exterior, Lamu orbit, day, continuous. The frigate darts out past the rings of Lamu. Interior, Lancer class, bridge, continuous. Poe, Lando, Jana, and Chewie sit at stations around the bridge of the Leia Organa. Poe speaks into a PA. All hands, prepare for a jump to light speed. Exterior, Lamu orbit, day, continuous. The Leia Organa jumps to light speed. Interior, primary cloning chamber, sometime later. General Pride stands at the head of a congregation of First Order stormtroopers, officers, and knights of Ren. In the center of the chamber is a glass column filled with an opaque liquid. Bubbles dance up to the surface of the glass. A handful of Sith attendants monitor the column. Pride gazes at the column. Empty it. One of the attendants flicks a switch on a nearby console. The liquid begins to drain from the tank, revealing a fully formed clone of Sheev Palpatine. As the last of the liquid drains away, the glass of the column recedes into the floor. Two attendants wrap the Emperor in a robe. Pride kneels before the Emperor, and the rest of the First Order follows suit. Rise, and boo Pride. Pride stands and approaches. You have done well. Pride turns back to the First Order. The Supreme Leader is dead. Long live the Emperor. The assembled troops echo back, long live the Emperor. Interior, Lancer-class bridge, same time, the Leia Organa soars through the swirling blue tunnel of faster-than-light travel. Dropping out of light speed in three, two, one... Poe pulls back on the throttle, and the tunnel of blue coalesces back into stars. The blue sphere of Kamino looms in the distance. Star destroyers lurk in orbit around the planet. All right, um, act natural. The ship continues on course for the First Order fleet. After a few moments, a voice crackles through the bridge. Lancer class frigate, this is Star Destroyer Steadfast. Your transponder is sending us an un incomplete code. What is your business here? We don't have you on the fleet list. Steadfast. Uh, sorry about the transponder. We'll get our technicians on that. Uh, as to purpose, we've got a troop resupply, two transports with men and munitions, answering the all call, uh, retransmitting our code directly. Jana flicks a switch. Copy. Please hold. Poe pulls back on the throttle. Clearance code approved. Your transports are clear to land on pad 16 and 17. Roger, Steadfast. Confirm pad 16 and 17. Poe kills the throttle. I have never been this close to a Star Destroyer without shooting at it. Well, the night is young. Huey yells. <laughs> Interior, Lancer class hangar bay, moments later. Rose and Zay load explosives onto one of the transports. Poe and Jana descend from the bridge and join the rest of the Resistance troops in the hangar. All right, everybody. We're clear to descend. How are we looking in ordinance? If this factory doesn't end up at the bottom of the ocean, it's only because there's not enough factory to actually sink. Poe walks up to Ray and Finn. You ready, Commander? Never readier. 
Everyone loads onto the two transports. Rose, Zhang, and a collection of other resistance troops load into the primary transport. Ray, Finn, and Poe, and the rest of the troops load into the secondary transport. Exterior, Camino orbit, night, same time. The stolen transports fly out of the Organa and head for the surface. Interior, secondary transport, continuous. The transports shudder as they pass through the atmosphere and into the rain and windswept environment of the extragalactic planet. Finn and Poe stand near the back of the transport. Hey, if we don't make it out of this, I just wanted to say... Ah, don't start that. We're making it out of here. Another shudder ripples down the transport. Poe looks to Finn. But I love you too. Finn beams. We're going to do this? Yeah. Sounds of scraping metal reverberate through the transport as it touches down on the rain-soaked landing pad, not fully settling down on first contact. The low... Loading ramp lowers and Ray leads the troops out of the train and into the rain. Exterior, pad 17, night, continuous. Ray looks across the way to see the first transport landing on the, another pad some distance away. Exterior, pad 16, night, same time. Rose leads her team out of their transport and towards the factory. All right, Gold Squad with me. Black Squad with Say. We're running on limited time here, so let's get this done fast and let's get this done right. And remember what Captain Dameron said, no heroes. If something goes wrong, stay calm and get yourself somewhere safe. Everyone ready? The crew nods and echo, uh, the crews nod and echo various affirmations. Let's move. Rose leads Jana and her team down the landing gantry and toward the main bulk of the factory. There are, no, there are no stormtroopers to be seen besides the resistance's own undercover troops. Gold Squad sets up a pulley system on the edge of the walkway that surrounds their section of the factory. Several troops, including Rose, step in harnesses and rappel over the side. Exterior factory supports night continuous. Several hundred meters away, Zay Versio and her team are rappelling down a different support and beginning to plant explosives along the circumference of the column. Rose instructs her team to do the same. She looks back up to the other landing pad and sees Ray's team enter the factory. Where is the first order? Interior cloning factory sometime later. Ray leads Finn... Poe and the rest of her squad into the cloning factory. The white, sterile-looking walls of the Kaminoan city are faded and cracked with age. Decades have passed since the first batch of Republic clones were born from this factory. The halls are empty, suspiciously so. The group navigates through the halls deeper into the complex. Interior, clone cathedral continuous. They emerge into a vast cloning chamber, but none of the machines are in operation and don't appear to have been used at all in quite some time. What? Did Hux lie to Leia? No, that was Kylo Ren's Star Destroyer in orbit. The First Order is here. Well, where are they? Ray looks around the chamber. Rain pelts the rounded glass dome above them. A voice crackles into her comlink. Saber Squad, we have eyes on a fighter headed your way. Ray looks up to the dome and sees Kylo Ren's TIE silencer pass overhead. Copy, Gold Squad, we see it. Something's not right here. Rose's voice returns. The Rogana is reporting a squad of Ties escorting a shuttle from the Steadfast, headed down here. What do they need a shuttle for? There's no one here. Something pulls at the edges of Ray's mind, a presence she cannot identify. It isn't Kylo. New plan. Intercept that shuttle. Whoever is on it will know what's going on here. Ray turns to head further into the complex. Wait, where are you going? I'm going to deal with Ren. Alone? Ray! I know we said no heroes, but... She hesitates, intending to say, I'm the only one who can help him, but she knows they won't understand. No, I get it. If anyone can stop him, it's you. Finn is uncharacteristically silent. He, uh, Ray looks to him. We'll have the transport ready when you get back. Ray leaves Saber Squad in the cloning chamber. Poe gets back on the comlink. Gold Squad, do you have eyes on where that shuttle landed? Interior primary cloning f in primary cloning chamber foyer moments later. Ray takes a few furtive steps into the cloning chamber foyer, overwhelmed by the sense that something is profoundly wrong in the space beyond her. As she approaches the doors of the primary chamber, they open without her influence. Interior primary cloning chamber continuous. Ray enters the chamber and discovers the newly reborn Emperor, his attendants, and the Knights of Ren. Palpatine's voice booms through the chamber. The scavenger of Jakku graces us with her presence. Welcome, my child, to the dawn of the new empire. Who are you? 
Has the galaxy been so quick to forget me? Have the years since my death dulled the pain of generations before you? Surely your princess of Alderaan spoke of me. After all, her father was the one who killed me. The presence pulling at Ray's mind becomes clear. Sidious, Luke told me about you. I've been known by many names, but yes, young one, I am he. You're the reason the First Order has been so interested in Kamino. The cycle of my rebirth has been in motion since long before you were brought into this world. The First Order is just one of many pawns that will once again win me rule of the galaxy. You're not winning anything. This ends here. Oh? Do you intend to kill me? And how do you know it will be permanent? How do you know that you will be the one to strike the killing blow, when not even the great Anakin Skywalker could bring finality to the ever-lengthening thread of my life? Ray can't refute his claim. Perhaps it's something else that brought you here. That anger inside you, bubbling up from the depths of your soul. Give me that anger, and I will make you stronger than the feeble Luke Skywalker ever dreamed. He was afraid of your strength, but I am in awe of it. Ray is frightened by his words, not only because of the way he speaks, but because of the hint of truth in what he is saying. These people you consort with are not worthy of your greatness. No matter what you do, they will always see you as the poor, orphaned junk collector from Jakku. As I have been reborn in this chamber, so shall you be reborn from the obscurity of your ancestors. You have waited. You have wanted someone to show you your place in all of this. Well, here I am. Ray pauses. This is not what she came here for, or at least not what she expected to find. Suddenly, a voice from the back of the room breaks, from, breaks her from her thoughts. Is the loyalty of my ancestors so easily forgotten? Kylo Ren emerges from a door at the opposite end of the cloning chamber. Ray notices something different about him, something imperceptible, but radiating off of him in waves. Palpatine turns to the newcomer. Ah, uh, the Supreme Leader, the Slayer of Snoke, son of the Skywalkers. Welcome. Kylo steps between Rey and Palpatine, facing the Emperor. You would give your wisdom to this scavenger before the grandson of Darth Vader? Lord Vader was weak. He points to Rey. If you truly seek the ancient knowledge of the Sith, that which your grandfather so desperately desired but could never earn... Prove yourself. Kylo turns to Rey, pulling back his cape to reveal his lightsaber. She notices it, too, seems different. She grips her own saber and looks into his eyes. Ben. He winks, a sly flash of truth just for her. She realizes she is not looking at Kylo Ren, but at Ben Solo. In a flourish, she ignites his saber and dives for the Emperor, the distorted red blade replaced by one of the brightest blue. Curiosity dances across Palpatine's face. The blade lances toward the Emperor's heart, but stops just short of the man himself, caught in the air by the smallest motion of a wizened hand. It's treason, then. He force pushes Ben, who, steady on his feet, slides across the floor as if on ice. He comes to stop near Ray. He looks to her. She ignites her saber. Palpatine gestures to the knights. They rush at the Jedi. The battle begins. Interior, cloning factory, same time. Poe and Finn lead the troops back through the facility. Their comms crackle. Saber squad? Yeah, Rose. How are things looking out there? Exterior, factory supports, night, same time. Rose and the rest of Gold Squad watch as various transports lift off from the pads around the factory and head back towards the fleet in orbit around Camino. We've got lots of transports heading back to orbit. Whoever was here seems to be leaving. Fast. Interior cloning factory, same time. Roger, stick to the plan. Even if they're leaving, we can still take this piece off the table. Exterior executive landing pad, night, moments later. Poe, Finn, and the rest of Saber Squad, all still in First Order uniforms, emerge back into the rain that pours over the cloning factory. 
A First Order shuttle sits on a landing pad some feet away from them. A handful of troopers mill about the shuttle's boarding ramp to avoid the rain. There is a commotion from further down the factory walkway. General Pride leads a group of stormtroopers towards the shuttle. Get the shuttle prepped. I want to lift off as soon as the Emperor is ready. Finn leads the resistance troopers towards the shuttle. As Pride and his security contingent reach the shuttle, one of the shuttle pilots notices the extra troops. Did you all get lost? The transports were leaving from the lower level. Uh, yeah. We must have gotten turned around in one of those hallways. One of Pride's troopers hears Finn's voice. Bryce, do you want to take this? Wait. He breaks off from Pride's group and heads for the resistance troopers. FN2187. Pride and the other troopers notice the interaction and begin to congregate around the commotion. Zeros? Who? One of the troopers from my old corps. FN2000 removes their helmet. And they said you defected. Pride steps forward. Who is this? General, this is one of the stormtroopers from the FN Corps. The one that lowered the shields on Starkiller Base. Finn removes his helmet. Phasma lowered the shields. She would never betray the First Order like that. Not like you. I didn't betray the First Order. Poe, sensing the tension, switches his blaster from stun to kill. Finn sees and holds out a hand to stop him. The First Order betrayed us. What's your call sign, Trooper? FN2000, General. FN2000, shoot this man. FN2000 raises his blaster. Poe and the rest of Saber Squad raise their blasters in response. The rest of Pride's troopers raise theirs in response. The escalation is quick. Finn is the only one to not draw a weapon. Hey! He steps towards FN2000. Zeros, you don't owe this man anything. None of you do. All any of you've done your whole lives is give is give to the First Order, and they have done nothing but take from you. They stole us from our homes. They took us from any hope of, an, of a life outside. The First Order has given me a life. They took us from our families. FN2000's aim wavers a touch. I don't know about you, but I've never met my mom. But I think about her every day. I don't even know if she's still alive. The First Order took that from me. Took that from all of us. You don't owe them a damn thing. FN2000's aim drops more. Pride notices. Enough of this. He aims his blaster at the back of FN2000's head and pulls the trigger. No! The entire collection of troops gazes in awe as the blaster bolt is held in midair. Finn, arms still extended towards his old comrade, has stopped the bolt with the force. FN2000 turns to look at the captive bolt and upon the man who fired it. The rest of Pride's troopers now look upon their leader with doubt. FN2000 aims his blaster at Pride, but drops it to the ground. You're not worth it. The rest of the First Order troopers follow suit. Pride raises his blaster again, but finds it pulled from his hand, flying across the pad into Finn's grasp. FN2000 turns back to Finn. A handful of other First Order defectors take their helmets off. We seek asylum with the Resistance. The Emperor will hear of this. Poe removes his helmet. Excuse me? Did he say the Emperor? Finn realizes what's been happening on Kamino. He turns to Poe. They weren't making an army of clones. He turns back towards the factory. They were just making one. Exterior, pad 16, night, same time. Rose, Zay, and the rest of Gold and Black squads return to the landing pad. Rose pulls out a detonator with a built-in timer. Her comlink crackles. Gold Squad, we've got some extra passengers headed your way. Roger, Saber. How many pass passengers are we talking? Uh, Finn got two squads of First Order troopers to defect. What? Oh, and he used the force to stop a blaster bolt in midair. What? We'll talk about it later. Just set the timer and get everyone back to the Organa. Roger, just make sure you get out in time. You've got ten minutes. Exterior, executive landing pad, night, same time. Copy. Ten minutes. Fly safe. Poe returns the comlink to his belt. Finn is still looking towards the factory. Interior, primary cloning chamber, same time. Like Snoke's Praetorian guards before them, Ben and Ray make quick work of the Knights of Ren. Their angles of attack are unconsciously symbiotic, almost like a dance. 
As the last night falls, Palpatine steps forward, his strength growing with each passing moment. He reaches out and summons a lightsaber from the hand of one of his attendants. Ben and Ray ready themselves as best they can. Palpatine surges forward with almost inhuman speed. Lightsabers clash. As the battle progresses, Ben notices Ray becoming more and more agitated and more and more out of control. Her attacks reach a tipping point, and a window opens up in her defenses. Palpatine seizes on the moment and slashes Ray across the gut. Exterior, pad 17, night, same time. As Poe helps Saber Squad and some of the defecting First Order troopers onto their transport, Finn senses Ray fall. Ray. Poe notices a change in Finn. What happened? It's Ray. Something's wrong. Finn looks to the factory. I have to help her. Poe pauses. I know you do. Finn steps over to Poe and kisses him. Go save the galaxy. Finn runs into the factory. Interior, primary cloning chamber, same time. Ray falls to the ground, breath breathing weakening as the moments pass. Ben flies at the Emperor, blade swirling and slashing with impact, aim, and ferocity. The Emperor throws Ben across the room with a blast of lightning. He can sense Ben's strength fading even as his even as his grows ever stronger. Interior factory hall, same time. Finn runs through the halls and arrives at a junction. He is unsure which route to choose. Come on, Ray, where are you? He hears shouting down one of the halls. He runs towards it. Interior primary cloning chamber, same time. Ben lunges at the Emperor, but each blow is deflected with ease. Is this what the great Skywalker line has been reduced to? Ben steadies himself and notices Finn enter on the opposite side of the room. The two make eye contact. Finn can sense a change in Ben, and the two form an unspoken plan. Please, you couldn't keep control of your galaxy 30 years ago. What makes you think this time will be any different? Finn preps for attack as the Emperor's focus is locked on Ben. You've already prepared the way. The Republic is gone, the Resistance is torn to rags, and once more the Empire will rise to bring order to the chaos of the galaxy. I've tried order through tyranny. It doesn't work. Perhaps for you, young one. I am the beginning and the end. I ruled this galaxy for generations before your birth, and I'll rule it for generations after your death. But then I'll see you in hell. He throws his saber at the Emperor, simultaneously reaching out for Rey's discarded weapon. Finn, still out of the Emperor's line of sight, begins to run towards him. He reaches to his waist and grabs his own lightsaber. The throne saber was a distraction, nothing more, and the Emperor deflects it with ease. But now he is exposed. Kylo lunges with Rey's saber and scores a glancing blow across the Emperor's shoulder. The newly born despot stumbles, but quickly rights himself. The Emperor turns to find a new attacker mere steps from him. Finn, saber held aloft, brings the blade to bear against the ancient embodiment of evil that stands before him. Time seems to slow. Finn steadies his breathing like Rey showed him, and focuses on the moment. As he swings the saber toward the Emperor, a vision flashes into his mind, like the visions of Hux in the forest, of the Emperor deflecting the blow and impaling him in retaliation. His eyes lock on the Emperor, and he watches as the old man's attack comes, just like in the vision. In anticipation, Finn sidesteps the saber and brings his blade straight through the Emperor's chest. As the beam passes through the Emperor, time rushes back to normal. The robed figure crumples to the ground, his saber clattering to the floor. Ben steps over and stands beside Finn. He kicks at the former galactic ruler and rolls him onto his back. The man's eyes lock onto Finn. No, no, how? You're just... A beat passes. A Jedi. A final breath escapes Palpatine's lips. Ben turns to Finn, and the former stormtrooper sees respect and compassion in his eyes. Ray coughs. They turn and rush to her. She is almost gone. Ben kneels beside her. Finn stands a little ways back, unsure what to do to help, if anything. Ben, remembering how Ray healed him on Rishi, attempts to replicate the process. He cradles Ray in his arms and places a hand over the damage. His breath steadies. Slowly, the flesh begins to mend. Color floods back into Ray's face, and her, breath, her breaths become more full. 
As the wound finishes closing, she gently opens her eyes. Ben smiles, his first true smile in years. He pulls her close, arms wrapping around her, nearly squeezing away the breath he just restored. She reaches for his face and pulls him in for a kiss. You saved me. No. You saved me. She laughs. Joy washes over the both of them. And I had help. Ray looks over Ben's shoulder to see Finn, lightsaber in hand, and beyond him the slain body of Emperor Palpatine. She stands and stumbles to Finn, wrapping him in an embrace like he's never known. I'm so proud of you. This is the first time anyone has told him this. He begins to cry. She releases him and looks into his eyes. Your parents would be so proud. Yours too. She smiles. She looks to Ben, face still beaming with joy. This is the happiest these three souls have ever been. A distant explosion breaks the moment. Finn is the first to realize what it is. The demolition. Ben extends a hand to Ray. She takes it, still unsteady on her feet. Let's go. Exterior executive landing pad night moments later. Factory slowly sink into the sea as explosives rip through the support columns. Finn, Ben, and Ray emerge from the factory and run onto Pride's shuttle. Interior Pride's shuttle bridge continuous. Ben takes the pilot seat, Finn helps Ray into a passenger seat, and then heads for the co pilot seat beside Ben. Exterior, executive landing pad, night, same time. The shuttle departs from the landing pad as the factory slips beneath the surface. Exterior, Camino orbit, night, same time. The shuttle roars past the steadfast and jumps to light speed. Exterior, Lamu surface, day. Poe watches the horizon. There's a boom in the distance and Pride's shuttle soars over the mountains. They're here. The shuttle comes to rest amidst the rest... The shuttle comes to rest amidst the rest of the ships, arriving to the roaring cheers of the resistance. The boarding ramp descends, and Finn and Ray emerge from the shuttle. Hands are shaken, hugs are had, backs are padded, the usual homecoming celebrations. Ben takes a few furtive steps down the ramp, though no one immediately notices. The crowd parts, though not deliberately, just enough for Chewbacca to have a clear line of sight to the prodigal son. They lock eyes. The Wookiee storms over to the shuttle, and soon he stands right before a trembling Ben Solo. A moment passes. Ben is unsure what is about to happen. Suddenly, Chewie lifts Ben off the, off the ground, enveloping him in the biggest Wookiee hug Ben has ever experienced, the kind of hugs Chewie shared with him when Ben was just a boy. Ben leans into it, enjoying for the first time in years the warmth of his oldest childhood friend. He cries. Ray, still swarmed by the resistance troops, eager to wish her congratulations, looks back across the throng to the shuttle. She sees in the distance the reunion of what remains of the Solo family and smiles. Exterior Lamu surface, dusk. As the sun begins to set, Ben goes to visit the memorial to Leia. He stands before the monument and notices the flower blooming in the ground. He kneels down. He recognizes it as one of the flowers his mother kept. As the memories flood back, he once again begins to cry. As he kneels in the dirt, weeping, a hand touches his shoulder. Did I give Luke's ghost to anybody? I can do it. Okay. Hey, kid. Ben stands and wipes the tears from his face. He turns to see the blue light shimmering off the ghost of Luke Skywalker. You did good. Thanks. A moment passes. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I should have listened. None of this would have happened if I... Luke holds up a hand. The unspoken words are understood. I told you I'd see you around. Ben smiles, chuckles. But there's someone else who wants to see you too. Ben looks over his uncle's shoulder to see another shimmering blue figure in the distance. Leia. Ma. He runs Ma. to her. They embrace, the moment captured in a wide shot as the sun begins to dip below the horizon, one bright star silhouetting Ben and Leia. This is the happiest and the saddest Ben has ever been. Ray watches from the distance. Fade to black. Exterior, marketplace, day, months later. Time passes, the galaxy is still in turmoil, but not so much as before. The First Order is scattered to the wind, with most worlds blissfully unaware the Empire had nearly been reborn on Kamino. The Republic is once again being rebuilt. 
Ray wanders through a marketplace, looking through the produce and odds and ends as she walks. She stops at one of the shops. How much for the lot? Shopkeep. Somebody. Twenty-five. Ray fishes around in her bag for credits. A figure speaks from a hollow projection in the back of the booth. And with elections occurring around the system for the new galactic legislature, traffic to the core worlds has been never been higher. Can you believe that? Free elections. I never thought I'd see the day. A coy smile emerges on Ray's face. Yeah. She hands the shopkeep the credits, and the old woman hands her a basket of produce. Thanks. She heads back through the market. At the edge of the collection of tents and huts is the Falcon, amongst other smaller but equally ancient and space-worn vessels. Chewbacca steps down the ramp and growls something. We'll tell him to figure out his own mess. He ascends the ramp. She follows. Interior, the Millennium Falcon, continuous. Ray climbs aboard and sets the basket of produce on the Jark table. She heads for the bridge. Interior, Millennium Falcon bridge, continuous. Ben sits in the pilot's seat. Chewie says you've got an issue with the computer? Yeah, she won't listen to me. That's because you have to respect her. I'm respectful. He gingerly places a hand on the Falcon's controls. Ray leans over and kisses him on the forehead. She flicks a switch on the console. Well, next time, make sure you respect the backup bypass. He chuckles. Chewie enters and yowls something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get there on time. Ben starts up the Falcon. Ready? Ready. Exterior, marketplace day, same time, the Falcon lifts off and heads to the stars. Exterior, planetary orbit, continuous. The music swells as the Falcon ascends, crescendoing as the freighter jumps to light speed. And... <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that, was that was great. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I love that. I love this that. took a lot longer than I thought it would, so I don't want to keep any of you longer than I have to. To, um, to be fair, I think this is 10 minutes shorter than the actual film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't CGI but anything. A significantly better ending. So much more fulfilling. <laughs> uh, Ian, you want to take us out? Yeah, uh, special thanks to everybody who joined to watch this, as well as everybody that participated. Uh, we are Subpixel. You can find our streams, our recorded videos, all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. That takes you right to our YouTube page. You can also follow us at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, Mixer. Um, thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys for participating. And uh, we'll have more content tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Bye-bye.